I know one. I, I'd quite like to... S I know that everyone, that there's always for ages, but it would be quite cool if they did... <laughs> I'm just saying words. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> And welcome to the eighth episode of the VXM Video Games Podcast, the conversational podcast where we discuss gaming and everything gaming related. I am your host, Rob Gisby, and joining me once again is concept artist Anthony Rupert Pring. All right. I'm thinking about my doorbell, when you're going to pring it, when you're going to pring it. <laughs> um, uh, uh, hang, on, hang, on, hang on. Along with games designer... Just off the top of his head. Thomas Tarquin Kuehl... Your name's really hard, Tom. Sorry. You've got to be cool to be kind. <laughs> that's the best I can come up with. No, no, that's pretty good. So, uh, Congratulations. After, after that uh, splendid, splendid, um... Splendiferous. Spl well, quite. Uh, introduction. Right. How is it going, chaps? Oh, uh, tippity-top, thanks. I'm, uh, surviving, you know. Yes. Feeling, feeling the first rough throat of a uh, of the start of the hay fever season. Oh yeah, this is always welcome. There's a bunch of rape coming up in the field up there. That's, so I've heard. That's rape seed. Yeah, yeah, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, if it's you a could, bit of a dodgy area around right If there. you could stop sending me flowers, Rob, that, that would be nice. <laughs> I'll try. Can't promise anything. <laughs> uh, but yeah, what have you guys been up to lately? All right. Yeah, I've recovered from my cold. <laughs> yeah, Boom. me and uh, we were supposed to go out for a drink like last week or, or whenever, and uh, and at the last minute, and was like, I've got a cold. I'm no. in bed. I'm crying. <laughs> he even put a really shit fake wet cough on. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I can't. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, chips. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we had a good time, though. We went out. We. We drank some... I went to a bar in Berry I'd never been to before. Yeah. And drank a drink that I will never drink again. Yeah, what was it called again? Oh, An intergalactic gargle blaster or something. Nothing, nothing that goes in your body should be that colour. Yeah, it was ever. like fluorescent green. Ugh. It tasted like a calypso. That's all right. Yeah. yeah. I heard it, it, it went down well enough on the night. You had yeah. some pretty wacky games though, Tom. Yeah, we, we played a game of... Um, Sit down pool. Sit down pool. It's probably the second time it's ever been played. Yeah. It was a, a game I invented with some friends at university, while too drunk to stand, but we all wanted <laughs> to play pool. So the the idea is is you play in two teams, two teams of two people, and each team, each player gets a chair each, and you place the chairs round the table. So you can use another team's chair. You can use anyone's chair to play your shot, but you can only play a shot sitting down. So and like once, once the people position the chairs, you're not allowed to move them. Yeah, that's it. They're, they're static once they're put in place. So you've either got to sit on a chair and lean far enough to get your shot in, or if you're actually good at pool, play your shots so that they land near chairs. Yeah. So or sit on the floor like, yeah. and have your teammate guide your shot above your head. Yeah, so they put their hand see. on the table. You, you sort of lean the pool cue on their hand, and then they're like left a bit, right a bit, and then you sort of just... Pop it. Without being able to see. It's yeah. uh, it's an interesting twist on pool. And if yeah. you're bored of pool, it's uh, it's a fun way of playing. Also, if you are so drunk, you can't stand. Perfect. Can't say better than that. Yeah, we did get some funny looks, um, <laughs> I must say. The bouncer, more than usual? Well, slightly more than, slightly usual, more than usual. But the, the, what, there was like a bouncer just standing there watching us for ages. And I could just, you know... It, if I wish I could have heard his monologue just like, What the fuck are these mugs doing? Slakes! Because that's, that's, that, that's how bouncers all, speak. All bouncers. All bouncers. All bouncers. Straight In England, from that EastEnders. Is. Yeah. But then, to be honest, I'd be a bit freaked out if walking into a bar, bouncer looked at my shoes and goes, "Ooh, those brogues, lovely." <laughs> <laughs> I do declare, fabulous footwear. Marvelous, are those real leather. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's so creepy for some reason. This, this is my bouncer voice. <laughs> I don't get trouble. No, I, I can't, can't imagine you would. Um, but yeah, well, I mean, like, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> my, my, fr my friend once said that if anyone ever attacked him in the street, he would just slowly drop his trousers, <laughs> throw money on the floor, and just start crying. <laughs> That's excellent. Excellent uh, strategy. Uh, 
Oh, but you know, it's what you have to do to survive yeah. on the mean streets of Paris and Emmons. Yeah, it's dangerous around here. <laughs> but, um. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear about that guy that has been selling fake bomb detectors? Yeah, that are actually golf ball detectors. The, a golf ball detectors. Did you not hear about this? No. What, locally? This is, this no, is no, quite no. a heavy, heavy subject it, for podcasting. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> this guy, some UK businessman, sold thousands of these um, supposed bomb detectors to the police, governments... Like round the world, and he's like become a millionaire, like multi millionaire. And we can't even begin to understand just how many lives have been lost because yeah, people have gone, people right, walk, he's not got a bomb. Yeah, people walking in with these golf ball detectors. How the shit did that happen? How, how, the, how did these governments go? Probably legit. Yeah, we'll just I, grab one of those. presumably the guy is just standing there as he's sort of going, and now we do the test on the not bomb, and you'll notice no noise coming from the device, and now I'll scan the bomb. <laughs> oh, it's going right off, chap. It's Zoidberging. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. But Good. Yeah. Well, I would have thought that someone involved in this decision would have played golf at some point mm-hmm. and known what this was. Or, well, they'd or tested slightly it might independently. Yeah, or tested it. Yeah, that would, that's another way to go. Mm. Well, yeah. But then that's... It wasn't the military of defence who were buying them, although apparently he had tried to sell them to him. So... Jesus, yeah, hanging, hanging's too good for him. Mm. So what's happening to him? Oh, he's going to get done. Oh, no, in fact, he has been done he's, for fraud. Yeah, he's already been done for fraud. I don't know what's going to happen to his ass. Like, I don't know. His ass? His he's going to get yeah. broken in With jail. Hole in one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's quite good, actually. That's true. There is gonna, no, sorry, somewhere in, in jail there is going to be a squaddy who's been thrown in for some sort of misdemeanor who is just going to rape his brains out. And... Squaddy, I salute you. <laughs> and that's actual rape as opposed to rape seed, mm. which we were talking about earlier. So moving on from rape, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, gone, it's gone, gone down a dark hole, a rabbit's hole. I don't know, are we... Are or, a, or a golf hole, what are they called? Pot hole? Pot hole? Pot? Pot? Hole? I don't, I don't hole. follow golf. Pot hole. Gap. Anyway, <laughs> it's probably got a, a really odd name like Bum Turf or something. Bum Turf. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> no, what golf's like? I mean, golf. Just listen to the word. It's someone who's someone who's clearly gone and like hacked up a lump and hit it with a stick and gone golf, <laughs> golf. <laughs> oh, well, is it is it is it Scottish? Was it made in it Scotland? It is Scottish. You can trust the Scottish. Golf. Golf. <laughs> It is. That's why. What you sound drunk, <laughs> Henry? What are you doing? Go. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, gentlemen, what have we been playing this week? Thomas, well, regale me. <laughs> Prepare to be regaled, sir. <laughs> I shall. I'm, I'm ready. I'm For, bracing myself. I've finally, as, as is my tradition, about three weeks after everyone else, I've finally finished a game. I've finished Tomb Raider. It's more than three weeks, mate. Well, yeah, but after everyone else finished it. <laughs> it's more, more. Oh. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, I haven't even played it yet. Well, I, to be honest, I still... You're fired. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Can you, can you be fired from this podcast? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I, think, I think the punishment is staying here and getting on with it. I was going to say, I'm shackled to the chair, so... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a saw. Now that, uh, now that it's getting warm, can you turn the radiator off that you've got us chained to, please, Rob? That would Speaking be... of which, you want me to open that window? Ooh, it's a bit cheeky. It's warm. I'm going to have some window nose opening sound effect on the podcast. <laughs> No, no, the key. Like You've locked it, have you? Have I? I don't know, the key's befuddled me. Ah, dear listeners. <laughs> this is a... Uh... You know like those really old adventure games? Right, use key on handle. No, use key on... Don't press the button in. Don't Stick press the button. There we go. Fucking amazing. <laughs> Brilliant. Now that's uh, been a, a little detour, but you were saying something about Tomb Raider? Yeah, so I finished it. Um... <laughs> It's probably going to be a little bit spoiler-tastic, but then you should have all finished this game by now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and I will try not to talk specific so much as occasions. Um, so there's an excellent moment towards the end of the game. I think So around the time where one of the characters dies, and it's sort of supposed to be a bit of a turning point, uh, Lara sort of takes 
this character's gun. And so she has the gun she's been using previously and this new character's gun. And I thought, brilliant, are we going to old Tomb Raider mode? Am I going to be able to do backflips now mm -hmm. and shoot tigers in the head with two in pistols? Because that's like, I thought we must be building up to that yeah, moment. Yeah. Um, it didn't happen, unfortunately. It didn't happen until, you know, like the penultimate end of the game moment when she does finally grab another gun and two pistols you just sort of blow this guy away and it's the only time you can ever wield two pistols but it was also a lovely tribute they even sort of have this camera pull, pull down shot so you know the sort of the, the game art for Tomb Raider Anniversary mm -hmm. she's sort of like in that pose looking like Lara Croft with the two guns up yeah it was epic as balls it was a nice little moment it seems like I would have enjoyed it a lot more if you didn't just spoil it for me well you probably would <laughs> no I'm sure I'll yeah that's not the biggest spoiler no. ever. No, but I, I think it, I, it's just one of those things where it's nice, nice to call it out. Nice yeah. that they did that. Yeah. Um, but then she didn't like dive off a really high ledge, just into just concrete. Into concrete, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah which no, which I was really good. hoping for. I thought that's how the game was going to end. As I said, I, I also assumed that backflips would be like something I could buy eventually. Yeah. You were right as well. Well, in fact, I suspect you reached the level cap sooner than I did. Um, it wasn't that far before the end. It was no, really weird. No, me neither, actually. I was about, yeah, pretty much at the end zone. Mm. I almost wonder if they've gained that little experience bar thing, because I never really specifically saw it going up or down by a, yeah. a great amount. And a lot of the things that you... The moves and stuff that you earn towards the end are just different and more violent ways of killing people. Like they, it does the same job as the as all the other kills. It's just aesthetically it, it looks you, cooler. And you get more experience for them, which is oh okay great. Yeah, obviously, towards the end of the game when you've yeah, got exactly, everything. Yeah. Um, so that was good. I didn't realise as well. I I got a bit animal death happy in one area and just killed every animal I saw. Mm. And I didn't realise you could hunt out areas. Yeah. So that that was sort of a mechanic I hadn't. I hadn't realised was there, and I just assumed you could keep killing as much as you wanted. Yeah, so like when you kill a certain amount, it says you only get like half or like less XP for killing them. And um, yeah, I did that in like one or two. So I'm assuming you being only retentive like me, you uh, 100%ed every area you could. I did, except for. You know, um, there's like cha various challenges that you can do, like blowing up all the mines on yeah, the beach yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I didn't do that. Really? No, I couldn't be bothered. It was too much hassle. That's unlucky. No, I, I, I don't have to, like, 100% well, all the trophies no. or whatever. Now, of course, on the, on the bright side, you actually get the end game gameplay then. Like, yeah. there, there actually is a point. So when, when you finish the game, it sort of says you can continue and you'll Free have... Free roaming on the island, yeah. And essentially all that means is you can go around. And in my one, I did blow up all the mines and I have shot all the stupid little talismans and all that. Mm. Gubbins. Some of them were fucking stupid. Um, and, yeah, there's literally nothing for me to do. Like, I can gun down bunnies, but... That's but you can still... That is really fun. fun. I can still, yeah, walk around. You can around. still, you know, hunt the place out. I yeah. could do, but there's nothing left to buy with the resources I get for it. But what I mean is, once you've done that, there's no reason to be there at all. No. no well, Unless still... you're just, like, running around and watching a hair bounce about. Her hair. Investigating the various <laughs> mods that are available. Yeah. But, you know, presumably the lack of gameplay in the end game, there will be something they'll fix with a bit of download content, something like that. Well, supposedly it's all going to be multiplayer. I thought they, they did a bit of a U-turn on that one, but uh, it's well, all that's, mill, that's coming it? up a bit later on. Interesting. With a story from analogaddiction.org. <laughs> Excellent. Which uh, actually has been, was picked up by the official Xbox magazine. Oh, so really? We were their source. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nice. I can see the, uh, oh, the hits impressed looks on your face. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. Um, and then the other game was... Except they spelt the name with the English spelling and our, ours is with like the American spelling. Why? Well, it, it's the same... Because the, uh, the guy in charge is from Australia and the spelling there is the same as it is in America. Wait, wait, wait. What, what word is spelt differently? Analog. Analog. They don't have the U or something. Yeah, it's A-N-A-L-O-G. Over there. Perverse little bastards. I know. It's... God. Get out of here. Why do you hate the U so much, America? Aluminum. Yes. Yeah, through. Jesus. <laughs> Collar. Ugh. Makes me furious. <laughs> Not, however, quite as furious as the tear opening mechanic in Bioshock is making me. 
Really? Have you been playing some more of that then? Uh, that's, that's what I'm moving on to. The next game on my list to actually start playing is XCOM, but I sort of figure I should just give Bioshock my time yeah. mm-hmm. till it's done. For shousies. So, I like it. I get that it's... So, my problem with the mechanic is that it's something Elizabeth can do. It's something that the companion that's with you is supposed to be, like, facilitating doing. Mm-hmm. But... Honestly, you hold a button and it just goes boom, and it's done, and it works immediately every time. And honestly, half the time I don't even check that she's there. She might not be. She might actually be invisible behind me. But it doesn't feel like an ability she's doing it. It feels like an ability I'm doing. Mm. To be fair, though, w- when you do select stuff, because like, over there, or that yeah, one, or whatever. But it happens immediately. No, I know. But I mean, I, I can, that's I for can gameplay's see, sake, though. I, I can see how gameplay would be impacted. I'm not sure it would be in a bad way well, if you had to, say, give her covering fire to get her close enough to open the tear or something like that. Mm. Like, I'd almost prefer that just because it would make it feel like she was there. I, mean, I don't know, there, they, are, there are times when you, that Tesla coil, you just need it straight away. Which is fine. Also, yeah. like, um, if you had to worry about her too much, the whole thing would become more escort mission Yeah, and they, they and say and really early be, on, don't they? You know, don't worry about Elizabeth. Yeah. And she'll... She's robust. So that's what sort of makes me feel like she's not really real. That's what sort of breaks the immersion for me. I... I Kind of agree. I think sometimes she feels like she's there for the sake of it. Yeah. I, I did say, in a roundabout way, that last podcast, I felt sometimes they kind of shoehorn ways for her to be there. And they're so desperate for you to like her, having to literally throw cash at you, like, half That's what the I mean. Time. That's what I was saying, you know, yeah, like, yeah. when you, 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 you don't have that inventory system. Like me! Yeah. <laughs> and even when Do you're you not like her, face. Not really. I don't feel like... I don't... I, I don't. I haven't started to think of her as a person. I think of Lara Croft more as an actual, real human being. You got a bit of. A but I do like Lara to Croft. think about yeah. Lara Croft as a human <laughs> being. There are plenty of ladies on the internet dressed up as Lara Croft as a real human yeah. being. Um, but yeah, no, she doesn't. Elizabeth, whatever her name is, doesn't really strike me as a real character yet. I don't know. I liked her. Like when there's parts <laughs> of the game where she's not with you, like later in the game, I and miss um, her. yeah. I did. I had a little sulk, a little sob in the corner. Uh, yeah, mate. How, um, how far are you through the game now? Uh, I've just finished taking Slate out in the oh, spoilers. <laughs> just taking Slate out in the uh, Hall of Heroes. Okay. Well, Hall of Heroes was cool. Yeah, yeah I quite enjoyed it. I, again, it's one of those things where because we're British, it's. <laughs> I sort of know about the little big horn, was it? Mm. Yeah, I sort of know about that. And I know about the Chinese thing, but it doesn't, I don't really care about it. <laughs> you don't care about Chinese people. I don't care about Indians. What do you care about, Tom? Well, I don't care about Americans either, though, particularly. <laughs> it's one of those things where, like, yeah, I don't... It's, I bet you if you're, like, brought up in an American school and, like, taught about George Washington from an early age and sort of taught to revere him and you have to do that oath of allegiance every morning when you get to school or whatever, I bet you that is fucking... Yeah critically interesting but for me it's just all over me you know that's all right I'd but, rather... but you like English history yeah well it's because it pertains to you right yeah that's exactly yeah. it well, yeah so they're not going to give a shit about what we've got going on here either or what we had going on I suppose the thing is I mean so they, they thought the Red Dead Redemption wouldn't be popular because it was sort of set strictly in an American setting with okay. American interests. But cowboys are universal, like, everyone likes cowboys. Yeah, and I think the, the difference with that was that... It's true. Uh, the difference with that, though, is that uh, it's sort of... First of all, it's a universally interesting subject. It's also not quite as long ago as American founding history and things like that, and it mm-hmm. sort of is... It's more internationally known. Yeah, it's a romantic era in history, yeah. the old West. But then again, I don't like. I don't think it's at all wrong for a rational to have focused specifically on like their own I think countries. I think the whole heritage story, the, the backstory of of Bioshock, and, and like you know, I think American history is interesting, even if it is brief. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And the one thing I'm surprised, and I'm liking a hell of a lot more than I thought I would. Like at the start of the game, I thought the rail travel was. Nice, like a nice little visual spectacle, and you had mm. the nice roller coaster bits of it. But in combat, I thought, oh, no, I'm not going to use this, I'm going to crouch behind a crate. Uh, and then it turns out I was completely wrong. I fucking it's love really it, isn't it? Yeah. That thing and just zapping stuff yeah. as I go by. I think that's one of the, the greatest features of the game, actually. Mm-hmm. I love how you can control the speed as well. So you can kind of whip around a corner, slow right down, headshot a guy, speed right and back up. It makes up. you feel badass yeah. when yep. you get it right. That's, yeah. uh, 
the and exactly they, what they should you be. Know, they bring enemies in later that can stop you from hogging the the, the sky rail, yeah, whatever it's called. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. I need to learn, however, when it is and when it's not going to work, me trying to jump up and grab the rail. Because I've had a sort of couple of things where, like, I've seen a guy fire a rocket at where I was and just thought, right, look up at the rail, jump. No! Yeah. <laughs> just fall right the off floor. the edge of the world. Yeah. Yeah. And you just reappear on the platform just in time to really eat that RPG. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, like, you know, it's, it's one I'm, I'm pushing along with. Mm. I'm still checking every nook and cranny for pineapples. No, yeah, naturally. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I will either carry on with that and hopefully have it done relatively soon in time to discuss and spoil the ending of that as well. No. Uh, or, uh, well, no, it's one of those things like Mass Effect 3. You know when that game came out and it sort of, the news articles started coming out going, the Mass Effect 3 ending, why yeah, is it yeah, so yeah. fucking terrible? I'm like, what? Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I, can't, I can't read these, right? This going, they're all going in a little folder and I will read them when I finish the damn game. It, I didn't play Mass Effect 3 until maybe six months after release or something just because I just didn't get around to it and it, it was a minefield to avoid all that mm. shit. Mm-hmm. Well, I have only seen opening scenes of 3 because I just got... Didn't, I didn't have the money for it at the time and got put off buying it just because of the barrage of, you know, spoilers. Like, And you, I do find myself reading them and I try not to, but you, you get caught up in them. And I, So I still haven't finished Mass Effect 3. I played the first two. What's, what's going to happen to the galaxy? I know what happens. <laughs> Everyone knows what happens. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't think it was as bad as all that. I didn't mind it too no, much. Maybe I'll actually enjoy it because... It wasn't good. <laughs> uh, I think, uh, like, a lot of the fan whinging, are we, re- are we, are we really going to discuss the Mass Effect 3 no, endings? No, no. <laughs> okay. of course not. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it. I'm, I'm playing Bioshock and I, I look forward to it. I may well start on XCOM if I get bored of it. Yeah, are you really going to get bored of it? I fucking loved it. Yeah, you know, there, there are just some things, there's stuff there that doesn't quite connect with me the same way that Bioshock did mm. in Infinite. So what have you been playing, Mr Pring? <laughs> okay, so... Um, in kind of celebration of its release on <laughs> I, I wonder if we'll I... discuss this later <laughs> what, what are you laughing at? Are you... You, well, you're, are you about to name check uh, Thomas was alone yeah. again? Oh, yeah. interesting <laughs> I've gone back to that, I've been playing through that again Cool. But I'm uh, sure I on, saw it on the PC? yeah, on PC so I played yeah. the new levels you didn't buy a PS Vita to celebrate your friend's new release no, I'm a terrible friend I've always thought so. Yeah. Terrible friend to Sony as well. And to Sony. Those guys are hot. It's on, no, it's on PS3 as well. So I could buy it. It comes yeah. out on the PS3 and Vita tomorrow, which so, is the Thursday, the 24th. The of Thursday. The, I, <laughs> apparently, I can't say dates without saying the in front of them. The Thursday. The Thursday, the 24th of the April. So I've been playing that. I've been standards. finishing off a bit of Revengeance. Cool. As well. well I going the going game. Go just briefly back to Thomas Was Alone, mm-hmm. uh, there's a video blog type thing that's up on the Penny Arcade uh, website every Wednesday, uh, which is called Extra Credits, where they sort of talk about game development strategies and techniques and things like that. And, and you know, quite it's quite interesting analysis. And they do a semi regular thing, which is games you might not have played uh, but should. Mm-hmm. And it's the fifth episode of that this time, and Thomas Was Alone was the third game mentioned in it. Really? Yeah, and That's apparently cool. they were uh, really impressed with it. It's Danny Wallace, is it? Danny Wallace it? narrates it, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that was apparently yeah, a good. I do love a bit of Danny Wallace. I think it's on Radio 2 tomorrow. Brilliant. I think it was just the discussion of how much character they managed to get into rectangles. Yeah. The mm-hmm. thing is, I, I'm a little bit worried. It's. it's had a lot of really good press now. You know, a lot of people have been singing its praises and, and it deserves it, but I'm a bit concerned that people are going to expect this flawless masterpiece now and it's been a little bit overhyped. I mean, it is great. I, I, I don't know. How's the music? Well, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just turned the sound off, actually. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> it is just noise, isn't it, it really? Is, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it, the, th- the thing about the game, which is what everyone will say, is that it's full of charm, and it is. You're, you're playing a bunch of rectangles and squares, and you know they've all got loads of character. And the, the part somehow, of that is somehow, yeah. how the fuck did they do that? Yeah. Mm. Oh, Danny Wallace. Um, yeah, it's, he's a good one. Mm-hmm. But I would quite like to play the whole. There's a new level and a new character and a new piece of music. A new character. A new character. Not a triangle. He can fly. Ah. He's got a little. 
rocket pack. Or just a bit of smoke. A rocket pack. Yeah, a rocket pack. Probably have to like rebuild the engine to, to put that in, didn't they? I don't know. I, it was the... I don't know. The level design was probably done by him, but um, another studio took over the... Um, it was Curve Studios? Right, okay. Took Care. over... Curve. Curve. They, oh. they do a whole bunch of port things. Yeah, they, yeah, they ported it to, to the Sony consoles. I thought you were like, yeah, Kerr! Like, <laughs> Kerr Studios. Avast. And such. But, cool. Yeah. Did awesome. Excitement times. I also played a bit of Street Fighter. Super Street Fighter 4. Ah, yes. I know no one here is really a I fan. fucking suck at fighting games. I am so bad. It really, any games that require combos, mm. I cannot play. At all. Yeah, which is something that's great about Revengeance, actually. Like, unlike Ninja Gaiden, which requires you to no. memorise these crazy combos, Revengeance, you can pretty much smash the buttons mm-hmm. until a prompt comes up and then you pull the trigger. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I've always been a fan of the Street Fighter series, and I just fancied a bit of a... The thing, the thing that always surprises me is just how much effort my Street Fighter fan friends are willing to go to, to go, like into the attic, fall through the roof, back into the attic, mm-hmm. find the box in the corner, dust off the Dreamcast, yeah. right? go back to their old house they lived in where they left their Street <laughs> Fighter 3 disc, yeah. punch the man in the face who won't let him in, you know. Duct tape him to a chair. That's it, steal the disc, get out of there. Yeah, especially... Get chased by the police. <laughs> yeah, spend 200 quid on two new Dreamcast controllers. Mm-hmm. And a new Dreamcast game. Yeah. For the one that just smashed. Yeah. And then uh, actually play Street Fighter 3, like a Street Fighter game that's out of date mm-hmm. by about 12 years. Yeah, Taylor's oldest time, that one. But, but people just pick their favourites. Some three people, 4 is, is just not okay. I do like 4, but 3 was more technical. And 3 is, gameplay-wise, the best, in my opinion. And I think a lot of people would agree. And it's, it's you know, for a 2D hand-drawn uh, fighter, it's... You know, quite complex, and I, a lot of people go crazy about it. Like you say, they go absolutely crazy and they have tournaments and spend their entire life doing it, like you know, Donkey Kong or something. Well, you know, it's it's. Uh, what was I reading? I was reading a story about uh, from a QA tester, and he was saying how once you've spent like a thousand plus hours testing like one feature of a video game, it's not a matter of being good at that game anymore. You are just godlike. It's instinctual. Mm-hmm. And they were sort of saying how quite a lot of the time when you're at press shows and things like that, the AI you're playing against is actually linked up to the QA department back at the studio. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes. If, like, if there's got to be an opposing team, then they might just put those guys in because they can have a bit more control over it. And then they'll have someone coordinating going, you know, could you get them away from the water? Because uh, that that feature doesn't work. Could someone kill the guy who's going over near the water, please? And things like that. And the sort of the idea is, is you've got to be firing your gun a lot, but never actually like you know you've got to make the journalist playing feel like fucking heroes. Yeah. And uh, apparently he was saying that sort of the last half hour of a day was always his favourite because that's when the production staff would say, right, anyone who's important's already looked at the game. Let him off the leech. <laughs> off the leech. Off, off the, the leech. leech. <laughs> Get off the leech, you fuckers. <laughs> well, you're, you're always on a leech. What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, let them off the leech. So they're just sort of decimated. What is this on? What kind of games is this on? Are you talking about? Shooter games, things like that. Sort of triple A games, honest. Weird. Never heard of that honest. before. Honest, Gavin. Whenever someone says honest in a sentence, it sounds so dishonest. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> they're not nicked. Honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I, uh, the thing for me with like games like Street Fighter or any beat 'em up where it's just one person versus another person, and that's the whole game. Mm. I just stage fright. No, it's just fucking boring as shit. Like I get bored within like a few minutes. I'm, and oh, unless you're, you're playing you're with your friends. Smash Brothers boy, I, the thing is, a lo- I like Smash Brothers. Yeah, but a lot of the immersion is perfecting your favourite character, learning <laughs> the move sets, being unbeatable with that character, and I, I think that's that the any longevity comes from kind of. That perfecting the art. Mm. It's uh, not... You see, this this is why I have the real men choose random mm-hmm. rule at parties. Which you have to because otherwise you well, get. Are you talking about person. picking up women? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Toss coin. Yeah, you're lucky, love. <laughs> <laughs> real men choose random. <laughs> no, well, that, that's it. Like, like, like Ant says, people will play only Ryu or whatever, and yeah. will just get godlike at him. Mm. And then the actual only competition in the room is between that guy and whoever else has done the same with another character. It sucks as well if you um, 
have one of your mates over or something and they've never played and obviously you're going to absolutely yeah. fist them if you play that one card. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't even know there is fisting. To be fair. No, yeah. well, I think I it's, actually, it's, just, um, it's just when you're playing something like Mortal Kombat and you get to the end of a round and the guy does the move that like has the guy rip your spine out and then strangle you with it or something and it's just like <laughs> alright okay <laughs> you played this before then yeah <laughs> might have done yeah what was On the those Street Fighter lonely game? lonely nights was it a Street Fighter game or was it a Marvel vs Capcom game or something where literally the only thing you had to do to perform a special move was touch the D-pad oh probably one of the the crossover titles where they just made everything super simple yeah. and had laser beams the size of the entire screen coming out of your cock and stuff. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I hate it when that happens. Oh, I do as well. <laughs> Bit sore. Yeah, I, I played my girlfriend and she insisted that we kept playing. <laughs> and I, Were you playing with your ma- magical laser cock? With my magical... <laughs> 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 Right, yeah. <clears throat> um, what have you been playing then, Rob? Oh, mate, I have been playing. Oh, I I played right the way through uh, the new Devil May Cry by Ninja Theory. I say new. No. I thought you'd already. I thought you played that before. No. Nah. Oh, okay. No, I played. I I had it. I've had it for a while, but I just haven't got around to playing it. So I, I could have sworn. <clears throat> or maybe you just. I wrote a preview for it. Was that what ago. it was? But you don't have to play games to say you like them. Not if you're a, a games journalist. You can just say what you want, right? No. Oh, right. <laughs> you did play the demo? No. No? You played it. We've talked about the demo before. Mm. But yeah, I. the thing is, I, I'm not really a hack and slash guy. It's not, not like really in my wheelhouse, mm. but I absolutely thoroughly enjoyed that game. And even though the gameplay isn't the kind of gameplay that I prefer, mm. everything else... I mean, it was really good, really solid. But sort of, everything sort of, else about it was so brilliant. There's a fair old bit of like puzzle platforming going on, yeah. isn't there? And that, that works quite well. <clears throat> I mean, like for a start, the story was really cool. The characters I liked a lot. Um, new Dante, better than old Dante, in my opinion. I'm I've, probably going to get killed for that. Yeah. I, do you know what? I don't know what the fuss is about. Like they changed him because things change. Yeah, they, yeah. Changed, they changed James Bond. They and changed... because old Dante was getting so boring, he was barely featuring in any of his games. He was, yeah, yeah, but he was always a 2D character, you know. Yeah, no, 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 I know. Personality what you mean. Personality. Yeah. <laughs> Lost my words completely. Yeah. So what, what is the reason for this having, like, I was looking at sales or something, mm. in Devil May Cry 4, critically panned for being boring and yeah. a bit mm-hmm. lame. Frankly. I think it was quite divisive. Sold something Some people like 4.8 million it. copies. Mm. And this is like pushing, it's now a million and a half or something like that, isn't it's it? 1.8 maybe. Or something. Yeah, but it's, it's like, I mean, as I've said before, if it were a new IP like Sleeping Dogs, cracking sales. But this is, you know, this is Devil May Cry. This should be selling. And in Japan, it's like barely sold a couple of copies at all. But there's nothing wrong with the game. The gameplay is absolutely no. fantastic. I, it feels like a Devil May Cry game. It yeah. feels better than... Level I mean, designs are awesome. Yeah, I was going to say, like, you know, the story's cool, the characters are great. The, the levels, when you go into Limbo and everything breaks apart, and, and the, these levels are amazing. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's draw-dropping, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's draw-dropping. Draw-dropping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but it is. It's really stunning. And, like, the, the combat's really good. Um, really solid like that is a fighting game that I can handle mm. like because it's like reasonably slow paced yeah. so I can kind of you, you, you have time to think about <coughs> what you're going to do you know you can smash the buttons but yeah I was using all the combos and things like yeah, to because a it's, degree it's less frantic I mean a lot goes on but it there's a bit more control. It feels a bit more controlled. It feels, it, it, yeah, yeah, it feels controlled. And then there's all this traversal stuff. Like you've got like angel mode and demon mode or whatever, and you use them to sort of lasso all these different things and pull them towards you or, or whip up to things uh, to like hooks and stuff. And it's, it's really definitely, fun. It's definitely not like brain teasery levels of puzzles. But no, it's it's yeah, it's actually a fun little challenge. It's really to break fun. Up the I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Really, really cool game. And I, I, I'm, it's such a shame that it hasn't. Um, sold as well as it could have because so, to be honest it's probably down to a little bit of prejudice and xenophobia of what do you mean a little bit I, I think I think that's all, all it is and I don't... it doesn't feel I know it's not Japanese but it, it doesn't feel like a Japanese game at all no, like it's not wacky well yeah it's not wacky yeah. I don't know it is quite Oh, it's, it's not. It's not over the top wacky. In tone, though, you can tell it's yeah. not. Oh, yeah. It's not. You can usually like tell if 
do the characters they speak in like non broken sentences and well they're not androgynous enough right. <laughs> he's pretty androgynous he's not that uh, androgynous not so much anymore no I think in the earlier videos he was but I mean you know I I spoke to you about it the other day Rob I I wasn't massively drawn into it, although I, there was nothing that I disliked about it. it just, I just didn't engage with it. But I think a lot of that was because I didn't pick up the game from the start, which was a bit of a dumb idea. But the, the bit that I did play was actually... It, the visual spectacle is incredible. Mm. Like, when you... Um, like, Limbo is like this world that kind of coexists... With this, the real world. With like the, the real world, world isn't it? Yeah. And the way that they kind of tackle that, like the TV tower... That, yeah, that part of the game, I, I saw that, and I played a bit of that, and and the actual boss that you fight there, I just thought, what days? It was it was so. Good. I know, like the whole. I swear, it's such a good game. It's such a shame. Yeah. Like I can't believe it's not doing better. Should and poor old Ninja game? Theory, they did a fucking blinding job, and they just seem to get shafted every time. Yeah, but I mean, critically, it was pretty highly acclaimed. I think. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's. But that, I mean, Enslaved was highly acclaimed, and it? it just mm. doesn't. It doesn't always seem to work out for Ninja Theory. I don't know, because the only thing that the only thing I can think is that his marketing is going wrong somewhere. Yeah, I have. I, I've got. I haven't seen a lot of marketing for the game. I, you know, but I think Capcom sh- have the money and should have put more money into marketing the game in Japan. You mm. know, okay, fine, it's done that's, by a British. That's where the audience should be. But that's you know that's where the game originated from. That was where a large percentage of the original audience came from, and I, they should have tailored it in in some way. You know, it couldn't be can't be that hard to to make it appealing to Japanese players. I mean, it's they like the Beatles. Yeah. So well, actually, a lot of the you know people say the Japanese are xenophobic, but a lot of that is really kind of more aimed towards Americans rather yeah. than the, the UK. Oh, there are but, there are Thunderbirds cafes. Yeah. In, in Japan yeah they, they have a massive thing for the British which is what I don't think they all the Japanese audience a lot of the Japanese audience probably thought oh this is just a foreign some foreign studio probably American has taken this game up well they're probably a, 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 more than a little bit angry that it's not being made by the same studio as it always was mm. I mean it, it's sort of like let's face it when Tomb Raider went to uh, Crystal Dynamics just to bring it back to Lara for a minute here mm-hmm. you know nice mm. Lara or Zelda <laughs> take a pick that's Tom's, like when, Tom's repertoire when uh, when Tomb Raider with the Tomb Raider series got taken from Idos and got sent to, to Crystal Dynamics yeah. and that first game they produced was a little bit pony mm. which one was it uh, it was the remake Chronicles? wasn't it, Is it, what it was? no Chronicles because well, I was it Legend? Might have been, yeah. yeah. The one about King Arthur? Something like that. Mm. I enjoyed that game. <sighs> yeah, but there were, there were... But I like King Arthur. There was plenty he's, wrong he's, with He's alright, that guy. Yeah? Lot, yeah? Fan of Arthur. Yeah. My granddad was called Arthur. I enjoyed the TV show called Arthur. He was a was prick, <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed the TV show Merlin, if that wins me any points. Uh, I haven't seen it. That's good. No. Is that There's the one also, uh, with that guy that looks like really weird and he's got like a bowl haircut and those big radar yeah. dishes? Yeah, yeah. I can see why you'd be put off. <laughs> UK studio Bossa did a social media game tie-in, Merlin. Cool. Yeah, they're it's, those guys. Because they're always on Facebook in that show. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's it's a you just. Oh, it's a new tweet from Merlin. <laughs> <laughs> look, that kind of. All the magic is just him using his iPhone. <laughs> yeah. Oh look, I've got Lights. an app. <laughs> yeah. No, they're the guys that did the uh, surgeon simulator. Oh right, uh, yes, right, those yeah. guys. Yeah. That that full game also looks cracking. And look, I can't wait because. You know, the, the original uh, game that they released was done in 48 hours. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Amazing. Yeah, people went crazy about it, and now they've made it, they fall fully... I think I saw a review for the full version. Has it come out just recently? I, I, saw, so. I saw a screenshot where one of the guys managed to stick his hand on a syringe and then the camera goes like multicoloured and sort of weird for a while oh, that's amazing yeah, I can't wait to play it I can't wait to watch the YouTube videos of people <laughs> playing it for the first yeah. time let's plays and stuff yeah. but uh, getting back to the, the the subject at hand play Devil May Cry DMC if you haven't played it because it's really really good mm. yeah. and then straight after that since I was in the hack and slash realm I moved on to Revengeance Revengeance Metal Gear Rising mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is so much harder to play mm. it, it, is, it is a it, lot harder than like it, Devil May Cry is like relatively simplistic mm. f- for that kind of thing but in, in a good way like it, it, it the learning curve was quite gradual and it was 
it was forgiving. It's, it's the pacing, isn't it? I think that's that's what it is. Right, Revenance is like stupidly fast paced, mm. and I was really angry because I couldn't work out how the <laughs> parrying system worked, and I was like. Uh, talking to you, Ant, on Facebook, just going like, why? <laughs> because there's a part... Are there enemies that you can only kill by parrying? Yeah, basically, Brilliant. like, in the, um, I didn't use it at all during the first level, and in the second level, there's a boss where you need to use it, but the, the whole game is so fast-paced, and I just didn't understand it's... how it worked, so this this robotic dog was just, like, chucking himself at me, and I just didn't know what to do, and I was just getting... And I didn't know that you could lock on with the camera either, so I just couldn't see anything, and I was just like... Um, <laughs> it is pretty relentless. I've got, you know, like, things just keep happening. Yeah, you know, but, but once I'd actually, like clicked and I, I understood it like I've really enjoyed the game since but I was having a bad time um, yeah because we gotta have a bad time <laughs> around the time when you were not enjoying it I remember trying to be like no stick at it please like yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't stop games no. usually but um, yeah and but I've really enjoyed it since then and it is fucking bonkers it is bonkers like in, in the second in, the, in, the, in a good Hideo Kojima kind of way yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so the dialogue is like so funny as well I don't know if it's just a battlefield yeah I just don't know if it's because it's been so many years since I actually played a Metal Gear Solid game but it just seems like such a load of bollocks but in like a really <laughs> funny way like yeah. Um, yeah, no, you, like, do you see what I was saying about how it kind of it takes the piss out of what people were kind of saying about it you know like yeah. it plays on the fact that it's not a stealth game yeah like they're like I thought you were supposed to be a master of stealth and yeah. then you just like yeah. fuck up and you just drop down like, and just... just try to be stealthy in this this region and then you get seen straight away and they're just like Raiden you tit um, <laughs> so to be honest it's better than him spending his whole life pretending to be solid snake isn't it so... yeah he sounds quite sl- sneaky in it I, that's, his voice goes up and down and all over the place. Yeah, I didn't like it. Don't Sometimes like it he's like, all. oh, hello, I'm a right in here. Then, oh, you ain't on, are you really? <laughs> well, like, he is mechanical, mechanical, mechanical testicles. Yeah. I, do, you, do you know if it's the same bloke that did the voice of Raiden in the second game? I think it is, and I think that he just can't keep up the manliness for that long, which is why he slips back to the girly I just rumor. don't know why that they felt like they needed to well, put the gruffness on it. Like According to David Hayter, the... Uh, old voice of Solid Snake basically can't, well no Kojima Productions couldn't really give that much of a shit about the uh, western voice production and they spend the majority of the budget on getting the Japanese voices wrong so I wonder if there's an option to switch over to the Japanese dub I'm sure there is yeah and I bet you he gets it bob on all the time in that bob on bob on but yeah the, his voice is a bit jarring I've got to a say a new voice of Raiden and you bob know you, you know there's like a guy that you speak to in it like the black guy with like the cornrows or whatever yeah he is the voice of the Jamaican guy in Futurama is he the limbo bloke is he Is he actually though yeah you've looked it up I, I'm pretty sure I looked it up yeah mm. so <laughs> what was his name Hermes. Hermes. Hermes Hermes yeah so uh, that uh, that tickled oh, maybe me maybe it is that guy mm. and but, then the scientist guy are you ready for this Billy West Doctor, that's his name. Your scientist, your little scientist friend. That oh, right, 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 okay. Yeah, no, no, not a voice actor called Doctor. Shame. Yeah. I just doctor. Doctor. But his name's not Doctor, he's a doctor. Yeah. His real name, the character's name is not Doctor. It is Doctor. Yeah, but I bet he has a real character name as uh, well. I doubt it. He's Doc, like, Doc <laughs> space Tor. Doctor Jenkins. It's, it's spelled with a K. Ah, Doctor. edgy. It's D O K, like D-O-K. Chaos Emeralds. Uh. Anyway, but yeah, it's it's mental. Like there's there's a bit like right at the beginning where you're like running vertically down a building while this like helicopter is shooting rockets up at you. You're dodging the rockets and then you start jumping from one rocket to the next up onto the front of the plane and then you like chop it into like a million pieces and just it all just falls down. It's like. Yeah. It is absolutely ludicrous. It is literally like Die Hard make their scene and then someone else goes, right, how can we up this? Yeah. It's like, it is a whole bag of ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. But Good. I love it. I love it. Several bags. Yeah. Three bags full of ridiculous. Speaking of revegonance, yeah. they, I think the DLC's just come out, at least it has in Japan. Jetstream Sam. Jet, Jetstream Sam. Yeah. yeah. Good. And you, is he a farmer? No, he's one of the... Um, <laughs> he's one of the I like evil. it. Robo Samurai that he fights. I hate those guys. Here's a question. Can you remember the Fireman Sam theme tune? Yeah. Yeah. Start to finish. Mm -hmm. Because everyone usually sings Fireman Sam, Fireman Sam, which is the Postman Pat theme tune. Who the fuck? Schoolboy era. 
idiots. <laughs> I can, I, so I, the trouble is, is I can remember the bit right in the middle of it, and I'm just trying to rewind back. And I can remember the bit of thing which is like, and his engines bright and clean, <laughs> fireman Sam. You cannot ignore. Sam is the hero next door. Ow! Why did we leave the choir? They, <laughs> we could be running that fucking choir. Yeah, brilliant. We could be singing Fireman Sam. <laughs> so, you know they've redone it in CGI. Fuck off. Yeah, and they've changed it. They've changed the theme, and I'm, I'm trying to remember what it, they've changed it to, but it, it's, it's... Fireman Sam, Fireman <laughs> Sam. <laughs> oh, it, they're so lame. Uh, it's, the same, it's the same theme, but they've replaced some of the words with, like, hip and laser beans and... Oh, does he do Laser a little, cock. Does he do a little Welsh rap in the middle of it? Yeah. Oh, oh Norman Price. <laughs> Norman Price. <laughs> yeah. No one is going to know what we're talking about. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. Cool. But, yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. I'm probably about halfway through. You reckon? Um, yeah. There's only like seven missions or something in it, right? It's quite missions. short. Yeah. yeah. So I've, I'm about halfway. I can't wait. I cannot wait for the, the moment that you fight the last boss for the first time and my yeah. chat box just pops up. Rob Gisby, kill me now. <laughs> fuck, 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 <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. Yeah, yeah but it's, uh, it's, I've only, I'm playing it on normal because it's, it's just hard. Yeah, it's really hard. I'm not good, I'm not good at these kind of games. Like, yeah, any fighting game or hack and slash game, mm. anything that involves combos, nah, no. not, not very good. But but the, the the parrying mechanic is so satisfying. Mm. I just oh, yeah. compl- I just did the boss that like is made out of segments. Monsoon. Yeah, yeah. Monsoon, Monsoon Moon Monsoon. or whatever his name is. Yeah, I, I found he's really easy up until about well, when he's almost about to die, and then he starts throwing shit at you. And oh, he, that really got my. You just have to block so quickly. Yeah. Like every he's got like size like Raphael Vader, style. All over again. Yeah, he gets all Darth Vader on you. He does. So which has got the cleverer boss fights? Uh, Devil May Cry DMC or Revegonant? Well, they're quite different. Like d- it's hugely different. Aren't yeah, they? like d- yeah. Devil May Cry has like the big sort of gargantuan monsters, whereas um, Metal Gear Rising, you're actually fighting people, like just normal like cyborg, cyborg people, yeah. but they've just got really cool skills. I quite like the idea of normal cyborg people. <laughs> normal, yeah, normal. Yeah, as, normal as far as cyborgs living go. next door cyborgs. <laughs> yeah. Jane from next door. She, her body breaks down into segments, but she's a lovely girl. Um, but yeah, the, it, it, the boss fights are hard, and it, I kind of from the demo, I thought it was going to be just a you got all of your satisfaction just from smashing the buttons and just chopping things up and watching everyone die. But there's a genuine challenge to the game, mm. like, and when later on you kind of have to utilize everything, all of the techniques that you learn, yeah, to. Because have you have you beaten the boss? Yeah, Monsoon. Yeah, because yeah. you can now, after you beat the boss, you can get their unique weapon. Yeah, you? so now I can use the size and pretend I'm Raphael. And I definitely rocking. recommend using that weapon. Yeah, I, I will. I, I've I've been concentrating on unlocking like health upgrades and things like mm-hmm. that. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll definitely easier. get to it. Cool. Um, and the, the last thing, quickly, that I've been playing is like a little iOS game. I saw the review. Toilet Tycoon? No, it's not Toilet Tycoon. I, <laughs> I when saw... will you play Toilet Tycoon? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Probably never. Mm. It's a good one to play on the toilet. Um, but uh, <laughs> no, the game I've been playing is called Mr. Crab. As in off of. SpongeBob SquarePants? No, I don't know what that. I don't know that. You don't know what SpongeBob SquarePants? I, I know what it is, but I've never watched it. What? Is there a, what generation are you What from? are you doing? You're fired. I'm fucking... Get out. I was old by the time that show was on. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. I went to the movie to watch the Spongebob movie. Yeah, because it had the half in it. Frankly, mm. if no other reason. It's a, bit, it's a bit overdone now. I mean, I wouldn't watch it now, but I'm a yeah. bit old. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With a good How old yeah. were you when it came out? I don't know, it was about 20. five years ago. 18? Probably older. Older? Yeah. I think you're underestimating just how old we are, Rob. You might be seven still, but uh... I, look, I, I know I look seven. I'm I'm slightly older. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, it's a game called Mr. Crab, and it's basically, um, it's like a platformer where obviously you're a crab, and say say okay, say you're looking at a tree. This is going to be hard to explain. I'll, I'll give give it a good go. Say you're looking at a tree and. You, you're looking at it with a camera and then you're panning round the edge of the tree but moving up at the same time so right. all the levels are like built around like a sort of a pole type oh. of thing and like then you fez. have to sorry like fez 
sort of, but instead of turning 90 degrees, the camera just rotates round. So you can see the whole thing? No, so as you're, you as you're moving round, uh, yeah, you can go left or right, and as you're moving round, it, like, rotates. Oh, I see what you're so, um, right, right. And then you have to, like... The idea is that you have to collect all the little baby crabs on the way up, and mm-hmm. then you get to the, to the goal at the top, and it's really fun. Yeah? Yeah, I, I was playing a little bit of it earlier. How do you control the crab? Um, so, basically... You go in one direction, and then if you hit a wall, you bounce off and go in the other direction, and then you just tap to jump, and it's as simple as that, and you just collect... Um, so it sort of climbs automatically. Yeah, and it's, it's just really, really fun. And, and what's, the, what's the crab's motivation? Uh, uh, he's just trying to reclaim his babies that got stolen by a dingo. By a dingo? Yeah, a dingo. Cool. I don't know. A dingo stole them. Oh, right. <laughs> at the top of the tree. Apparently. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and it's really fun. So I recommend, you know, it's only like 99p or something. So mm. I, I highly recommend it. Cool. Good. I, it... I was really drunk last night when I got home and read the review for it. And I was like, I fucking want to play that. <laughs> Just like got on the app store. <laughs> drunken, drunken app store purchases are the best yeah. app store purchases. Yeah. Well, naturally. Why times? did I buy virtual dice? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Gaming news, it's the gaming news with Tom and Ant and me, where we learn about things that happened in the weeks. But only <sighs> pertaining to gaming. Mostly. <laughs> <laughs> so we're Barry St. Edmunds this week. Yeah. <laughs> and Barry St. Edmunds. A man was caught trampling tulips. <laughs> <laughs> he was hung. <laughs> the end. I quite like that. <laughs> he was hung from a sugar beet. Uh, yeah. Till he was sorry. <laughs> Very sorry indeed. I can hate the smell of that sugar beet factory. I don't mind it. Well, you wouldn't. You'd lived it your whole life. That's true. That's racist. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> it's like the smell of the brewery. It's like, I quite like that as well. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I think been to and worked in so many bars that just smell like spilt beer on the floor. It's actually quite nice to sort of have the opposite end of that. This is beer at the start of its life cycle. Rather than at the end, and that's yeah. that's much more positive. Uh, it's beautiful. Far more. Birth is always nicer than death. <laughs> 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 that's a quote. <laughs> that is a quote. And bring. Yeah. 20th. Why aren't there more games about birth? All I can think of is Fallout Three. Well, I don't know where you've got to like time travel back through time and birth all the soldiers that are going to be in the next Call of Duty what? game. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Quick time <laughs> event. Bash, 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 bash. <laughs> Tongs. <laughs> oh, no. Get so, gaming news, anyway. Oh, yeah, bong. <laughs> bong, bong. Um, so, I thought we'd start off with something, with the big news first. Um, and that is... Uh, game and Wario, release date announced. Um... <laughs> Indeed. Uh, this I saw a feature of this game which made me wheel, wheel excited. Wheel excited? So there is a mini-game mode in this game which is it's supposed to represent gaming in your childhood. And the idea is is you've got this sort of picture shown on the screen. This is a Wii U game, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So the picture shown on the telly is of your character, this kid, playing games under the covers with the sort of light for his games console playing and he's playing. And you've got to keep an eye out on the big screen for your mum, like, who comes up the stairs or, like, goes around to the window or appears out of the TV as a ghost, something sure. like that. To check. But, like, to check. To check that you're... you're not up playing games. And then on the Wii U pad, you've got to, like, complete the WarioWare minigames and then you've got to put the controller down when she comes in to have your guy hide under the bed sheet. That's cool. It was. It was a really, really nice... Cool. Like, it's a little bit meta game, and it? it was mm. quite nice. And I sort of... It just gave me a little waft of nostalgia back to, obviously, the impossible task of sneaking and playing games on your Game Boy when you've got to have like a 200 megawatt lamp perched on it mm-hmm. blasting light into the screen in order to see your tetrominoes and, and you had those magnifying glasses with the which did the lights and they, oh yeah the lights shone under the screen and just made like glare on the screen and then that got magnified so you yep. just had a light basically <laughs> yeah the worst thing I but, remember once uh, I, I stood in, I, st- I stood I stayed in a hotel and this kid you did stand in the hotel I, as well mm. you stood uh, in the hotel yeah I was actually no, I'm not going to say that so <laughs> we there was this kid and I remember being so jealous because he had this Game Boy like adapt like plug in thing and it had these like fold out 
speakers and this magnificent. It was like a battery, transformer. It was like a transformer. The battery drainer, yeah. for, drainer 4000. Yeah. yeah. He didn't actually have it on, he just showed it to me, probably because the battery was dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Little bastard. So I murdered. But anyway, no. So I, the, 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 Mario, the WarioWare formula, and I first came to WarioWare on the. Uh, DS, the, the, I was going to call it the Game Boy DS and make myself sound really old there. <laughs> the uh, Nintendo DS. Uh, and yeah, so basically it, it gives you, from what I played of it anyway, it gives you a quick mini game task to do, usually something like cut the rope or whatever, touch the fly or something like that. And it's always a really simple task mm-hmm. and you've got about five seconds to do it in. And then that amount of time gets shorter and shorter and you've got to see how many of the games you can complete. And then they even have bosses, don't they, which are sort of longer, harder. Faster, stronger games. You never played a Warrior Wear game? Nah. Oh, my. They are so I'm, fun. I'm not really interested fun. in, like, mini game things, really. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, you're going to get you bored can, you eventually. Can, you can pick up chicks with these games. They are. You that can. sounds unlikely. <laughs> well, no, no, no. It's, it's bizarre just how keen females are for the Warrior Wear titles. It's bizarre. Honestly, I Wario don't. gets them all soupy, does it? No, I guess it's so. Just that, it's just that panicky kind of, like, you've got... What you get five ten seconds to do some stupid and task. It is, it's it's like a compilation of iPhone games, but yeah. given to you in five second snaps. And playing that drunk, uh, eventually you're going to fall on each other. And yeah, and we it's, all know what that leads likely. to: pregnancy, <laughs> a terrible life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. So stay away, kids. But yeah. The only thing that worries me is the last Mario Wear game I bought was for the Wii. And in it, you had to complete the single-player mode before you could unlock multiplayer that's mode. ridiculous. Which is such an archaic practice when you think for a game that's so well-suited to a party game. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, the Mario Party games are much tamer, aren't they? And I, not really for me. Never played any of those either. Mm. So as a Wii U owner, yeah. would you say it's a console where and you can quite easily and quickly pass the controllers around? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. That's good, because that's exactly what this game needs. Mm. Like, the idea, especially with the asynchronous, with one person with the touchpad, Yeah, on, it, it makes perfect sense on, that you're passing uh, that touchpad around. On Nintendo Land, it's very easy to switch the the, the sort of gamepad between different players. So it's, you, you know, you don't have to move your seats or anything. You just quickly change, like, player A to B mm. and then pass it. You know, it's really easy. So Cool. But that, this game is anyway, it's coming out on June the 23rd, so... Uh, Exciting times. I know everyone's star for something to play. Um, and there's so many Wii U's out there, right? Yep, but uh, didn't me... Get out, didn't get outsold by the Wii this month. For me... Oh, no, wait, no, it did. Shit. <laughs> for me, it's certainly not going to be that. Um, guess what, guys? FIFA 14's been announced. Fuck yeah! So what's different? The soundtrack? I hope not. That would be way too different. That would be too different. But I've got a story here um, on analogaddiction.org. In this game, you'll be able to bite other players, <laughs> yeah. pick up the ball and run with it. Yeah. Um, Are you allowed to, if one of the players owns the ball and gets sent off for uh, committing fouls and things, is the game off because he takes his ball and goes home? Jumpers for goalposts. Mm. But yeah, I've got a story here um, on analogaddiction.org by a certain Rob Gisby, um, who I've heard is an up-and-coming uh, j- journalistic God. Really? I've heard he's, I've heard he's average. Yeah, I've heard he's a knob. An average knob. Ginger as well. Mm. Which you should judge him on. I think so. <laughs> um, what did the knob say? Um, today, EA officially announced that FIFA 14 will be shooting onto shop shelves later this year. Uh, so you just rearranged the words in the press release then? Pretty much. <laughs> good, good. Um, uh, basically, it's only been confirmed for current gen systems, uh, Xbox 360, PS3 and PC. Um... However, apparently they, they're going to announce an um, additional platform soon, and I imagine it will be coming to next gen. Mm. But there's, you know, I don't don't know about Wii U because you know that is the main reason I'm excited for next gen consoles. FIFA. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. They're going to have. I think, tress, I think that's the only reason on the anyone is going to buy next gen consoles. It's just it's going to revolutionise gaming. Absolutely. Mm. Um, so be sure to stay tuned to Analog Addiction, where we'll keep you up to date on all the latest FIFA news leading up to kickoff. <gasps> Crash and burn. Bong! <laughs> um, NHL 14's also been announced, but we'll probably just not. You know, I, I, yeah, it's a jokey. The hockey, headline. the hockey games were at least mildly interesting because they tried to do that whole beat 'em up crossover for yeah. a while. Yeah, that was good. Um, some some news stories for you, Tom. Uh, the mm. Jack and Daxter collection and the Sly collection are both coming to Vita. Pretty sure that's racist against Vita owners. Just assuming that just because I'm a Vita owner, I'm interested in your crappy games. 
No, I am. I never, really, <laughs> I never really played Jack and Daxter the first time around, but uh, no, me neither. And I didn't, I didn't play Sly either. And if I had a Vita, these would be the kind of games that I'd quite like to, you know, go back mm-hmm. and play. That's, um, that's what I. But uh, these collections, these HD collections, I appreciate that they're not. It's not just a case of grabbing the old game discs and copying them onto a memory card or whatever like that. It is actually sort of more work than that. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, I sort of old games. I, I want. I, I'll pay the bare minimum. Cost old games is old, basically. That's the trouble. Yeah, but the thing is, they're though, not, you know, they're not archaic, are they? They're you know only last gen. Last gen. And so. I missed that was the PS2 era was when I actually didn't play as many games. Um, there were some brilliant. Titles. And I missed out on yeah. some some huge ones that I'm like happy now to go back, like um, Shadow of the Colossus and things like ICO. that. Is it ICO? Or, or ICO. 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 Echo! Echo! Yeah. Echo! 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 <laughs> I don't know why. Do you remember Echo Bars? No. Uh, tasty. <laughs> Me. Me. They was tasty. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Did uh, it we taste? Have, ladies and gentlemen, we have a new accent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not reading really that. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah. D- does it taste like a natural echo? Yeah, I mean, you taste it, it and then you kind of taste it again, yeah. and then but less again, and yeah. then each time it slowly dissipates, and then there's nothing. Just emptiness. Just <laughs> emptiness. Just a big black hole inside you. Do you know what I drank over the weekend? Iron Brew, which I'd never had in liquid form. I've had the really? bar before. Yeah, yeah. I fucking love those Iron Brew tube bars. They're so I good. Think, yeah. Pretty good. I'm in Scotland. Iron Brew is... The it's water. They have it on. They taps, just have it out yeah. of their taps. Yeah, they don't have water. They shower in Iron Brew. Mm. <laughs> no, it outsells Coca Cola. I think it's the only country in the world where a fizzy, carbonated <laughs> beverage, beverage, outsells Coca Cola. Good. Well, I think if Seven Up can have its own video game, then yeah, Iron Brew. Name? Cool spot. Cool spot. Iron Brew would just be like just a pub fighting game. <laughs> <laughs> just like a. Do you remember the old Tango adverts as well? You oh, tango, slap around the face. Know, yeah. I thought you were going to do that to me. I thought you were going to tango me for a minute there, Anthony. No. Um, but as well as... <laughs> as I'm going to try to rein this in. Yeah, as yeah. well as um, Jack and Dexter and Sly collections coming to Vita, a new Metal Gear Solid um, collection has been confirmed. Oh, oh yeah, I saw Metal that. Metal Gear Legacy collection, which has Metal Gears 1 to 4... You mean the games that should have been in the Metal in the, Gear collection? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, Cheeky uh, as balls, isn't it? And it's going to be... How much is it? Have they announced it? I don't know if we have an actual uh, but, yeah. price. What? I imagine it will be like uh, retail release because it's got premium. a Premium! Yeah, that really pissed me off. I just... And I seem to remember it was something like to get Metal Gear Solid 1, you had to order the game at game or something like that. You had to pre-order it at game. But if you pre-ordered it at HMV or something, you got Metal Gear 4 instead so there was no way to actually get all well, of the in Japan the HD collection featured uh, all of them all of them but over here only a few uh, they, 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 they don't have them on the menu but it was just a picture of Hideo Kojima getting his knob out and <laughs> slapping it over the camera well, that's kind of how I felt when I had to skip straight to two yeah, yeah. you know the great one the really good mm. one the one where Raiden sounded normal yeah <laughs> But uh, I've got a quote here. Who fancy? I think you should do that Jamaican yeah, yeah. accent. I, I think Stick a lot was... of anting in there. You'll be all right. Anting. Where was it? The boon dem. We wanted to give them a to gear so. <laughs> hey, it's at least as good as uh, yeah. Mass Effect 3's voice acting. <laughs> Oh, like, by the way, before you read this, yeah. in Metal Gear uh, Rising, there's a bit in the second level where you go down to the sewers and there's this little kid that comes out of nowhere and his accent oh, is the most God, racist God. accent I've ever heard. George, I will, I will see the South African kid. I will get a clip up. Yeah, that's it is get... so amazing. <laughs> listen, listen. Lose the map ninja hideout, ninja man. <laughs> no, I'm looking for bad guys. Oh, Dems, Conter, Searchland. You know about it. You know me now, go back. You know one of them scores, now. Nah? <laughs> yeah. nah, I guess you're all right. If you're a cyborg, you know who Day is? Sort of. Whatever. Yeah. I if you stand a... on one leg, <laughs> are you ha? <laughs> Missa, so pleased to see you, Annie. <laughs> I think you, you should read the quote in that voice, Rob. I don't think I can. I, you know, I mean, we're, you know. Our accents are all well and good, but I think that that guy 
It's taken it marginally too far. But go on, yeah. um, you're, you're at I can't do it. That was a pure fluke, I honest. But, but uh, no one cares. What? No one cares about these quotes. No yeah, one listens. Huh. People like it. No. People. We had a German guy uh, write in um, about last week's episode where we did our, where you did your German accent, and he said he was laughing so much that he nearly crashed the car, which is sort of really nice and terrifying <laughs> yeah. at the same time that yeah. we nearly killed someone. Yeah. Well, and I suspect we'd be Tom. held liable. Tom so, nearly killed someone. Tom nearly killed someone. Oh, right, I'd be held liable. Yeah, which is why I don't want to do any accents or quotes, just That's in true. case I... Or... Anyway, they were just basically saying how they wanted to uh, to give Metal Gear Solid fans the opportunity to experience the series from beginning to end on one console <laughs> and give us lots and lots of moolah. That's true. I so, love paying for old games. Yeah. This is why I love the oh, uh, Wii U eShop. Okay. You remember those old games you owned five times? Yeah. Why not six times? Yeah. <laughs> Awful. I mean, they, we've just gone out and, and re-bought this. Uh, well, when did HD Collection come out last year? Yeah, I think it was like before Christmas. It wasn't long ago. I no, mean, it was. Yeah. I think it was it th- th- just before this Christmas or, b- or the year before. What, Does I mean, anyone else just bought it? Does anyone else remember getting their Sega Master System, switching it on without a game in, and it being like, Alex the Kid? Alex the Kid. Yeah. What? It comes with a free game, like yeah. hard program to it. Yeah. Fucking it's cool. Weird. I was and now they're just like, hey, you know, I bet you can get the Alex Kid. Collection, but it doesn't come with like Alex Kid games at all. It comes with the trailer. Well, the one that came on the console, you couldn't buy separately. Uh, uh, down the line, you couldn't actually get hold of it because you could get the sequel, which was a load of trash. It was awful, but you couldn't get the, the good one, the original what one. Was it like Alex, the sort of teenager, and then Alex, the the dad, and then Alex, the <laughs> Alex, the corpse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, well, all I'm saying is it probably wouldn't kill Nintendo to actually just install like Mario 1, 2, 3, 4 on every Wii U they sell. Yeah, it can't take up much memory. No. Not in, not in today's, you know, standards. But it's just I know it's going to come up. And There's only 8 gigabytes on the console or something ridiculous, so yeah, you'd be wanking. Seven and a half of those are taken up with updates on them. <laughs> um, so hang on, wait, the Wii U has no in, real internal memory? It's got, really. I think it's only like 16 gigabytes. So, what do you save it to? Cloud? No, no, you, you save it to the console. It's you just, it's you just, just have to make tough decisions. Fuck all, yeah. And you also, so an external hard drive will work in it. It's USB 3, so it will power oh, a right. hard drive. But still, that's like an extra expense, really, isn't it? Yeah, that's diabolical. Yeah, yeah it's just, just another nuggety turd on top of the pile of turd. shit that is <laughs> the Wii U. They've really not done themselves any favours, have they? <laughs> no. Um, so, today, um, today, today, a Mr. British retailer Green. known as Tesco Direct, uh, who um, we are all fans of. Uh, we like we? their horse-based products. Uh, not really. No, you don't not like horse fan. bolognese. Mm, well, yeah. Probably wouldn't know. I've probably eaten <laughs> it for ten years and not known. Yeah, but uh, anyway, they they put an advert online for Call of Duty Ghosts which was the rumoured new Call of Duty to be coming out from the team that brought us all the Modern Warfare games, which uh, people seemed to quite enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard some positive things. So Good. are Infinity Ward still a studio there? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are, Infinity are they? Ward are still... They don't have Zampella and Vince, no, what's-his-face, no. Vince Zampella and the other guy. No. They've gone back to... they started a new com- uh, studio... For EA. Yeah. Under EA. Yeah. But then one but then one of them left. Jason West, I think, left, or did yeah. the other one? One of them did. What is the studio called, you know? I can't remember. Respawn. Respawn. Respawn, oh, yeah. Respawn, yeah. But the thing about these two, I mean, I don't want to put too much on two guys because yeah, a creative lead is, is a important factor in a game and they can help or hinder a mm-hmm. project. But these guys did come up and make Medal of Honor back when they were good, mm-hmm. back on the on the fourth generation or whatever it was back on the PS2 and things PS2, like that yeah. then, and those were some corking games I mean the PC version is, stands out as one of the finest games mm. wouldn't that be the sixth generation sixth whatever <laughs> don't look at me like that jeez um, and then yeah move to for the I just realised what you just did there sixth 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 <laughs> you bastard just like my mum she says tiss you no, I don't say tiss you. 
that's how it's that's how it's supposed to be. I didn't say bolognese. <laughs> <laughs> and speculisation. And speculisation. Speculpont lovely. Yeah. No. But then so on leaving on leaving EA, the Medal of Honor series suddenly went shit and the really Call shit. of Duty series suddenly started getting good. And then But Medal of Honor is still on EA. Yeah, 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 it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're carrying on doing it, but they don't have Jason West and Vincent oh, yeah, yeah. behind it. So it, it's sort of one of those things where they they clearly they clearly it's not a fluke that they keep on no, they producing know. these first person shooter military hits. Um, but I don't know, like uh, Call of Duty Ghosts, it's a thing. I hope mm. you play as a ghost. Aren't you guys bored of it yet? Oh, I was oh yeah, yeah. I, I don't mean I mean you two. I mean everyone. Oh else right, you're talking to the audience. Yeah. So the thing about Call of Duty is, if you're drunk, you can still play it. It's it's it, there's nothing wrong with it. Honestly, there isn't. No. But it's like it's like playing a sports game. The rules never change. I know that's what that's 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 what I mean. You know, the other day I got well a couple of weeks ago. I think I said I fancied a couple of games on there. I picked up and played a few matches on one of the one of Infinity Wards, and. They are good games, you know. For, as, as far as that military shooter go, they do it well, really well. It's arcadey, it's easy to pick up. This is it. They, they, they do one thing and they yeah. do it well, but there, there's no depth. No, there's no depth. To it. And the thing is, I'm fine with just boshing through a six to eight hour campaign, you know, and rest. then and yeah, pretty much, and th- that's fine, you know. I pr- I probably won't for the first time ever. I, I'm probably not going to buy the next one at launch. I'll get it whenever. I, yeah, I haven't. I, I didn't buy the new. It platform. just it strikes to me that it doesn't necessarily deserve all the acclaim it gets anymore. Like no. they haven't they haven't broken their form. The thing is, but then also, who was it? The the guys who made Heavy Rain were saying how much of a profit their game made, and how developers or publishers need to get it out of their head that uh, innovative rhymes with unprofitable because it's not mm. true. Mm. No, and I, that's that's that's. What I was going to get to, really, I, I'm, I'm fed up of playing the same game again. I mean, they say words like rebalance and new weapons, and it's the same fucking game. It killed off the Command and Conquer series quite yeah, badly. It's just the same game. I just, I, I, you could put any of the Infinity Ward Call of Duties in front of me, and I'd enjoy them all equally. Mm-hmm. I expect maybe marginal difference. To they, be honest, pluck pluck one level out of any of them if you didn't know the series and I doubt you'd be able to tell which game it was from yeah well it's not even that I mean multiplayer they end up bringing the old maps back from previous games with each new map pack oh pay give us another 15 quid or whatever and then have the maps that you had on the last game that we sold you for 40 quid I, can't people see through that aren't people bored of that crap by now I mean I am I won't, I'm not going to buy another Call of Duty game it's, it's the old frustration of being into a hobby that actually does have quite mass market appeal I mean, I'm sure there are countless real art house movie critics who sit there in an empty cinema watching some French classic. Meanwhile, the next screen on showing Twilight Breaking Shine is uh, yeah. packed to the gills. And, and the, the problem with the games industry compared to the film industry is it's so young in comparison. Mm. And the, the film industry has already built up and up and up and up to the point where the the kind of indie movies and the low budget movies still have a place there. They yeah, still there's, there's still a reason for them, and they don't have to compare their <laughs> their sales figures, you know, to the the triple A blockbusters. Where you know, but where we are in the games industry now is we're seeing a huge. Oh, you know, it's become popular. It's become acceptable. Anyone is now a gamer, and what probably you know, you know part in. In large part due to like mobile phones and stuff yeah, having games on because it's, it's everyone's got the the equipment at their fingertips now to do that kind of thing, right? So well, I think uh, I might. Well, yeah, the market, the market of console owners definitely hasn't shrunk. Well, yeah. one one point whatever we said, Call of Duty, uh, not Call of Duty, um, Devil May Cry sold one point eight million or whatever. Ten years ago, that would have been crazy figures. Yeah. yeah. Fifteen years ago, that would have been. Unbelievable figures, but then now, the budget for the game would have been yeah, sure. But now stuff. that's nothing. That's that's not you know the the top selling games, the the what were the Mario's and the Sonics are, are now the Call of Duties, which are selling ridiculous, mm. unfathomable. Like AC three sold something like nine million copies in like a reasonably short yeah you know, and, window, and you're seeing games like um, GTA making more money in their opening window than films. Mm. Yeah. And 
because of that, uh, publishers are going, well, we could either not make much money and kind of put a respectable game out, or we could make fuckloads of money by putting Call of Duty 29 out. Yeah. And they're going to go, yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. And <sighs> pub, you know, publishers are going to see the, the pound signs, the dollar signs, what, you know, they're, 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 that's, they're a business, they have to make the money. Sure. Yeah. Well, that's what Activision do best, isn't it? Yeah. They, they don't have, like, huge amounts of, like, IPs and things, but the ones that they have are successful, mostly, apart from the movie tie-ins, which are a bit shit. But they're then the movie tie-ins always money. make money. Yeah. Loads of money. They always have done it, and they, and they can... It's like the Walking Dead survival instinct. That's Activision, and that's sold, you know, gangbusters. And it's oh, it's fan exploitation. Yeah, you know. it is. Apparently they had, like, a huge advert on in the last episode of Walking Dead in America, and it's just like, like the show, play the game, the characters that you lo- know and love, give us your fucking money. Murder. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, there's a, <laughs> there's a reason why we carried on making Harry Potter games about five or six games after they stopped being good. Mm. But I, just, I, I, you know, if you're going to do a movie tie-in, why not do it justice? Because, because you don't have the time. And you don't have to. No. That's what I mean. You so, don't well, have, like, these publishers, they don't have to give them that time. How do, how do you explain money? if you've had like seven years to work on your movie tie-in and uh, you've got almost unparalleled access to the aliens' backstory and back catalogue <laughs> of, of, of everything and there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't be able to produce an at least Claim, passable game. Room, so. Ah, right. Yeah, sorry. What's, uh, what's the excuse there, Rob? Uh, Randy Pitchford. And he is Randy. He no, I don't know. I'd... It takes up a lot of his time being that Randy. <laughs> but no, I know. I've, I like I've, his shirts. I've mentioned his, it. Like, his, uh, <laughs> his like suit jackets and things. They're all so ridiculous. It's fucking horrific. You know, like the magic carpet in Aladdin. They look like that. <laughs> some just got that wrapped around yeah. and cut into a suit. <laughs> um, yeah. But I think we've given Call of Duty enough time. Um, yeah, for the I can't meantime. believe we covered Call of Duty and FIFA in our news. I know. It's, I, well, I, th- I thought they were going to be quick, silly little stories, but then we've we've gone off into. That's, the, that's, that's, what, we do, that's what we do. That's what we do. Um, but moving on to something that's genuinely interesting. Oh, God. Um, well, genuinely interesting. Oh, we'll genuinely. rattle on with this for an hour, then. Shinji Mikami's uh, re- sort of released um, new information about his new game, who, who, of course, is the father of survival horror, um, creator of the Resident Evil series, um, and it's called The Evil Within. Have you guys seen this? It's outside of my field of interest because I don't normally go in for horror no, or, I, the I, horror genre I don't I think really. particularly I've lost a lot of interest in it but mm. this has definitely piqued my interest you know the first Resi was great yeah and the second yeah. you know the, when those first Resi games came out they they were scary I mean they weren't terrifying but they, they were edgy and they were well we were quite young as well so they were yeah, probably more scary they were then. quite vivid as well when you think about vivid, that yeah. compared to the sort of but, other games at I the mean, time you just, you just hit the Resi series on, you know alone you play the first ones, like the gameplay was flawed and bad. You know, it, it wasn't. It was. Oh, if you that played control it now, mechanism. Yeah, if you played it now, you'd throw up on the controller. But I did. You, yeah, but they were genuinely scary and and put me on edge. And mm. the further the Resi series went along, the more I lost interest. It's because it got so action heavy. It did become action heavy. Although he he did um, Resident Evil Four. Yeah, which was, which was great. The best. Which, yeah, which yeah. was awesome. And the, that and he basically says that you know the key to survival horror is like the balance, the balance of yeah. action and um, and horror. Like just just getting that and exactly right is like the key. And obviously choosing your zombies nationality. Yeah, because oh, that's yeah, basically they've made a really. Lost the words. They, yeah, they've made some poor choices. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, who's not going to enjoy killing Spanish zombies? <laughs> With flowers coming out of their heads. Yeah. Capcom making poor choices. <laughs> yeah. But no. Well, they are, aren't they? They're when one it, of my wor- they're, they're one of my worst publishers. Enemies. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just just think I just yeah, have no faith. We're coming for you. I have no faith in Capcom. I, I've lost faith in them over time. Mm. But so, what's the angle he's going for? So with basically. This? Um, your character, um, you're just like a detective or something. Like the setup's quite um, 
generic generic yeah and you and you end up getting a call to go to like some insane asylum in this town you arrive and there's like cop cars everywhere but you can't find anyone and then you go inside and there's just dead bodies like all over the shop uh, and then you get knocked on the conked on the back of the head pass out and then you like wake up in this sort of like mi- similar place but but like sort up. of really it's like the asylum but it's like r- like just this really weird dimensional. It's not. It's not necessarily in a different reality, but it's like it's kind of like a Silent Hill. Yeah, Silent Hill. So I hear, I hear yeah. Silent Hill is yeah. one of the real psychological fuck you up kind of games. Uh, and, uh, you know, the the, the video that prefer. you linked me to. I mean, they they've obviously spent a lot of time on the environments mm. and the enemies and the, and making sure that everything you see uh, kind of like. <clears throat> gives you the the right emotion it invokes the right emotion that, that they want and when he was talking about balance it, you know he was saying too action heavy you feel too powerful you're not scared of anything too scary and not enough power and you, people just you don't, don't want play, to play like, yeah so getting that but i mean it makes sense but i well it's it's yeah. the it's the pendulum that ea's been swinging on isn't it yeah but i mean i think they got uh, dead space and dead space 2 what I think they did it really well. I, yeah. I enjoyed that. I thought they were At which great. point, EA knee jerked and went the wrong. over the other way. Yeah. Far too far. But uh, you know, watching at the moment, seeing Mikami back doing survival horror, I think is is, is great. But I, at the moment, I'm not getting my hopes up too high because it mm. it still looks a little bit generic. Japanese survival horror. But then the setup for the first Resident Evil was completely generic and. I guess haunted so. house, basically. It was a haunted house. So, yeah. well. and and then Ooh. like the one of the big things about this game is, <clears throat> like it it apparently has like zombie this, badgers. <laughs> apart from zombie badgers, it has uh, this thing where you can be somewhere in the world and then somehow you find yourself back in the asylum. So it's like playing with sort of space, like traveling through space. Mm-hmm. So it's it's. Seems like really quite psychological, and um, I, I think it could be interesting. But you know, it's, it's good to see that he's doing something cool. Um, I would prefer to see a new beautiful Joe, but new uh, Eternal Darkness. I'd smash my face in, <laughs> in a good way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I, I, it's definitely one to watch, and hopefully, we're going to be shitting our pants very soon. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe it's about time I played another horror game. I don't know. Yeah, I'm I've been. I have been told I should just get the PlayStation Two emulator and just play Silent Hill because I have Silent happen. Hill One and Two are great. Yeah. Now I know I look like a really tough, scary kind of You've bulk got, of a man. You got yeah. facial piercings and everything, man. That's true. I um, took mine out. I just didn't feel like I was manly enough to deserve them. No, you know? not not when you're standing next to me. That's for sure. Um, but I am, believe it or not, a, com- a complete. Pussy when it comes to horror. I don't believe it. No, I, I, wouldn't I don't either. believe it at all. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't either. But yeah, I, Dead Space. I like didn't even get through it. <laughs> really? Just, well, yeah. Did you play Condemned. I've seen the box <laughs> because that was probably the last game that I played that made me feel genuinely on edge. Yeah, you know? that, that was quite. Yeah, they they had. I mean, it was all loud noise and yeah. shrill, but. And I think you eventually become as you play through it, you become kind of desensitized to it. Well, in the end, it, spoilers for. A, oh come on! Like, it's like twenty years old. Game or whatever. Whatever. <laughs> At the end of it, you just get like, given like a sword and the ability to shoot fire out of your hands or something like that. Something fucking ridiculous. Lasers out of your cock. It lasers was pretty much cock laser. Like, and then the second one is all really completely stupid, and you can shoot lasers so, out of your balls as well. <laughs> so it does. It does that sort of weird difficulty curve thing where it's going up, and then it just goes out. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? We couldn't think of an end, so we just went whack. Yeah. <laughs> Can I get a big bong? Bong! Shit, that was loud. Um, so, moving on to different types of news. That was sort of announcements, release dates, that kind of thing. Um, Microsoft has confirmed that the next-gen Xbox announcement will come on May the 21st. As I said, three days before my wedding. Woo! I've, as I said, just enough time to get it into my... Uh... Group speech. Excellent. Have they announced where or how they're going to announce it? 
Um, okay, so after weeks of rumour and speculation, Microsoft has confirmed that it will be holding an event on Tuesday, May the 21st at 10am Pacific time. At the local time. pub yeah. <laughs> to the Microsoft campus. Yeah. To unveil its next generation Xbox, commonly referred to as Durango. Uh, the event will take place in at the company's Redmond, Washington campus. Durango is a town in Colorado. Cheers for that. It's okay. <laughs> But uh, yeah, anyway, so in, in an official blog post, Microsoft says that the, this event will mark the beginning of the new generation of games, TV, and entertainment. Uh, and it comes accompanied with a live broadcast on Xbox.com, and you know, people will be streaming it all over the shop. Do you know what I really want? I don't want games. I want games as a service. That's really good. I need, I need there to be a service. Many a service. Mm, yeah. But on that day, we'll share our vision for Xbox and give you a real taste of the future. Then 19 days later at E3, you know, they'll continue to show what they've got. So, I mean, that's good that it's sort of on the way. I'm, I'm excited to see yeah, what there they is have. one. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they for a while they've been saying that declining. There even is one at all. Oh so. yeah. No. To to be fair, this they could still get up, and I, part of me really hopes they do. Just get up and go. Now we think that the current Xbox 360 has at least three more years <laughs> in its life cycle. If they did, I would laugh. <laughs> I would laugh a lot. It's weird because I've. Yeah, I've been a, an Xbox guy for this whole generation, yeah. and now PlayStation, I, f- I feel a sort of certain loyalty to them for some reason, and then like a bit of animosity towards Microsoft lately. I'm definitely starting to feel animosity towards Microsoft. I, I really am. I, well, but the thing is, a lot of it is fueled by... Speculisation. Specu-ramificalisation. And I, I, I'm just as guilty as everyone else, and it, it just goes to show... You know how much harm there can be in just not yeah. just getting out. I there mean, there is, yeah, it. there could there is a lot of harm in specular pontification <laughs> in portalization and then in, so yeah. not wanting to uh, speculate, but uh, I've heard that the new really? Xbox is going to have a kitten blood reservoir in it, <laughs> and if you put a used game in it, dashes the kitten blood all over the used game, so you can't play it anymore. You see, I've heard that as well. Yeah. The uh, blood is uh, from kitten tears. Blood from kids. <laughs> they make them cry blood. They stab them in the retina. <laughs> but yes, it's interesting. PlayStation seems to be. I think we've been talking about um, that Shinji Mikami's game for too long. <laughs> I think it's, you're right. It, yeah. It's merging. But yeah, Sony seem to have positioned themselves to appeal to the core gamer. Yeah. What's it? And that's great. I mean, yeah. So... And if Xbox want to position themselves to appeal to the core gamer's mum, then. They're absolutely free to do that, and there is a market for that. It, it's not us, but it doesn't have to be us. Well, we don't appeal to core gamers' mums. Is that what you're saying? Hey, speak for yourself. <laughs> 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 He's nearly a married man. That's true. I, uh, do you God, appeal, am I do you appeal to... to her mum? <laughs> no. <laughs> am I gonna have they to... hate you. Am I going to have to tone down my uh, <laughs> nah. myself? No. no. Like you get worse when you get married. That's yeah. true. Yeah, you lose all sort of... I don't have to, yeah, so I, I'll always be able to go home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we, yeah, we've we talked about this quite a bit. But it's good that it's coming, and, you know, once it's there, we'll we'll discuss it further, I think. Yeah, we'll do a special Xbox episode, Probably, like we did yeah. for the PlayStation. Because we're fair and unbiased. Fuck Xbox. <laughs> Microsoft. Microcunts, Mola. <laughs> I was about to say... <laughs> did you say microcunts? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, um, against all odds, um, the XCOM squad-based shooter reveal is coming soon. You know, like there was the XCOM uh, that was at E3 like a few years ago that was supposed to be like a first-person shooter and all of that. With and the then, invisible aliens. And yeah, like and then um, the whole uh, turn-based um, combat one was made in the time since they showed that and came out, you know. Mm-hmm. So... But this one, apparently they've turned it into a third-person squad-based shooter and there's an announcement uh, coming in the next few, de- few days and they're going to sh- show it off. Do and- you know what would be awesome? If it could keep replay data from XCOM games and then string them up as objectives for the player to follow. I don't know what you mean. So, let's say we're playing a game of XCOM Enemy Unknown, the strategy game. It is kind of a strategy game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And... I, we, you and I, we play out a game and it records both of our move data. All right. And then we switch on to this game. And then my objective as one of my squad mates, 
Ah. Is the objectives I set for him running around the map? That'd be that would be, that would be horrific. Loads of fun. It would I also be fucking would, irritating just, if you know you lost the match. That's just an. Mm. But I, think, I guess you'd have to try and turn it around. Maybe try it could be one of those things where, like, win the battle or win the war kind of thing. Like, because that sounds like an interesting concept for a game in and of itself. You know. Well, you wouldn't want the two to be dependent on each other necessarily. Well, but no, but it'd be quite interesting. You, you could. It could be one of those things. Like, maybe you lose the battle. But your objective is to plant like a bomb somewhere here to destroy a certain target or something. So you still win. Or maybe in my XCOM game, I do like a supply drop somewhere specifically that I know you will never go to in that battle. But then I know when we're playing this other game, if I'm there at the right time, I can nab yeah. myself something powerful. That's very interesting. I like, I like that. But uh, yeah, so so keep your eyes or keep your peepers on the internet for uh, the reveal of that. Personally, I am not holding out much hope for that one. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not really interested, I have to say. No. It works as a strategy game. It's like when they turn Syndicate into a first person shooter. Mm. I never played it, but actually, it was. It's it not too bad. Scott Stobbery's a pretty first good First person shooter. Yeah. It was alright. I mean, people went butt hurt crazy, didn't they? Because they completely changed the genre. It was okay. It, it was solid. It was. Mm. Like the actual the four player co op thing was quite late to come to that game, but was probably my favourite feature on it. Yeah. Mostly because it was most reminiscent of. Actually playing Syndicate. Syndicate. I mean, the, the the it looked really nice. The what I saw. Starbury Studios. Yeah, it yeah. looked really nice. They know their craft. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of those things where not not every game needs to be reinvented. Like XCOM, I I hope to think proved because it, it, essentially the gameplay of XCOM was the gameplay of Syndicate. Everyone loved it, didn't mm. they? When it came out, it yeah. did work. It did well. I don't know how it did sales wise, but. Probably all right. Yeah, um, but uh, there's, there was something quite amusing uh, recently this week that the the head of Bong. Bong, um, sorry <laughs> that uh, the uh, the head of Dice uh, or, or Dice executive producer Patrick Buck explained that. Uh, he doesn't see motion controls as a necessary addition. Basically, they were like, oh, you're going to put mo- motion controls in Battlefield 4. What does that 4? mean, like, connect or what? Con- yeah, whatever, like, what connect, the new next play, yeah. uh, play, what's it called with the PlayStation? Move, Move that's it. Move. Um, and, and basically, he uh, quote, he's just like, uh, we are not interested in things that don't make games better. Ooh, that's I like that. Damning. I, I, yeah. Damning. I love that. That's, yeah, that's brilliant. I thought that was amazing. So it's not going to work with the Wonder Book, then? You're not going to be able to like open up the manual for your gun and read off the screen how to do it. <laughs> or like, yeah, yeah, you you open it up and there's like a map and there like directions and a shopping list. Don't forget the tea bags. <laughs> um, but yeah, and he just said there's a lot of gimmicks, people throwing money at us. Can you implement support for this quirky control thing? No, it doesn't make the game better. And I just think that's really cool. Like, that's great. I'm really happy to hear yeah. a, a developer actually turn around and say, "Fuck off with your gimmicks." Yeah, yeah that's and you know. I, <coughs> Battlefield probably isn't the inter- most interesting yeah. game anyway. And it's not the most interesting it, part of that story either. But but it, it, if if you know if it did imp- implement motion controls as well, it would be fucking boring as shit. Battlefield's great. I, it, it does what it's supposed to do, and it and it does it well. But it's, um, it's okay. It's <laughs> it's not my sort of thing. You know. It's. I think I, the thing is when I, I when I came to Battlefield, I probably been playing Call of Duty games for quite a while mm-hmm. and it sort of came out as the big contender to it and actually it was one of those things where it almost felt quite liberating to sort of it's to so have all, different yeah and to have all that sort of low pace time where you're sort of going well shit you know yeah. like no one's I no just, one's even around me mm, I actually think the comparisons between the two are quite insulting they're different games yeah you know you said, people say you can play one you can't play the other well don't be ridiculous that's just a childish yeah point they're of view. such different games if you want to have a couple of stupid games, play COD. If you want to take your time, be immersed, play Battlefield. I think yeah. they're different games. Yeah. Um, he, he did add, though, that uh, they are extremely open to innovation, but just not if it's a gimmick. You know, like... That's now, brilliant. did anyone else see the video of the chat playing uh, Team... No, what is it? Team Fortress, Team Fortress. 2, Two. with the uh, unidirectional walk pad... And an Oculus Rift and a light gun. No way. Holy shit, it was awesome. Uh, like, he had to full-blown run yeah. to get around and then aim and fire the, the rocket launcher in the game and that it looked great. incredibly good fun. Wow. It was like... How did he, how did he run, though? Like On an on- on- omnidirectional treadmill. Right. So he was literally... So it's sort of... It's, yeah. it's like a round base round you, about the size of this tabletop that we're on. Uh... 
Brilliant. Yep. That and the mic will love that. It'll sound excellent. Uh, and it's sort of, yeah, it has a ring around your waist so that you don't sort of topple over it, and then you can just run in it. Wow. So it does literally mean, like, your character's physical ability in the game is quite directly linked to your own personal you know, fitness. This is the sort of thing that could bring back arcades. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 but I want it in my home as well. Do you, Do you think? Want, you think that that's going to cost... That's going to... Just think about it. Think I how much a treadmill it. costs anyway. <laughs> how much the Oculus Rift is going to cost and a, and a light gun. About, you know a normal treadmill $20? costs yeah. like two, Some, three grand. Something like that. You're looking for a grand, well, at least a grand's worth of equipment. Could you, could you see yourself playing the Oculus Rift with a controller in your hand? Or would that get too fucked up? I, I mean, I, I, I can... People get used to the idea of looking with their head and walking with their hand. That's kind of how a lot of Wii games work, really. I, I've heard so many positive things about people that have tried out the Oculus Rift with just a controller. Yeah. So I, I don't think that would get boring. I think, I think it's just like one step well, at a time. Yeah. Oculus Rift, well, the risk flipped first, um, and then you know, Omni three. <laughs> well, but, but these things. And if they, if they, but if they bring, if they make a thing where this can take a battery pack into the back of it. Or like in your pocket or whatever, and have like a portable version of it. If I can sit on the bus with what is essentially like mm. a sixty-inch plasma TV, you're going to get beaten up. Yeah, yeah, no, I will. I'll get mugged <laughs> and mugged. Yeah, I'll wake up to find an old man next to me with his tongue just about to lick the corner of my face. <laughs> and if, if I can sit there with an Xbox and you'll and, and love play, it, and play, play a game as if it was on my home PC or something in just glorious mm-hmm. massive thing. Yeah. Google Glass, I mate. Do that. That's I what's going to. No, I'd love that. Google Glass. Google Glass, the device that you're going to. No, I'm. I'm no, clumsy enough. Advertising. I'm clum- clumsy enough as it is. No, I, what you say, I, 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 I can only imagine it being amazing, but it's not. You're not going to get people buy it. People can barely afford consoles at the yeah. moment. And you, you're about to get this, this, this new generation of consoles coming out. You're looking at least 200. Do you think that within our lifetime, Man They're gonna will ha- set foot on the moon. <laughs> no. That is never going to happen, Tom. Don't no. be ridiculous. You to be fair, it hasn't loom. within our lifetimes. <laughs> oh, we're not getting into conspiracy theories, right? No, no, no. I know no. it hasn't. <laughs> like no one's in the time that all of us have been born, no one stepped on the moon. Oh, oh yeah, right. Yeah, that's oh, quite okay. sad. Good, good point. Um, no, but sir. <laughs> no, Sorry. but I was just, I was just going to say, do you think in our in our lifetime we're going to have like sort of decent virtual reality at any yeah. point? Yes, I, I really, I think. I think in in the time it takes for this podcast and E three to happen. But then in the eighties, they they were saying we we're talking about it in the next ten years. Yeah, but the eighties version of the future is uh, fantastic. Then, didn't they, didn't they have like, blood dragon? Blood dragon. Yeah. I cannot wait. Didn't they have the? They had the guy who made quite a lot of those old arcade machines. The company, the set up company that made all the old virtual reality machines, basically came up and just said it was a massive fucking scam. Like the device barely worked half the time. <laughs> there was know. no real gameplay. Everyone had the same experience. It was like watching a video. When really, I uh, yeah. when I think of like virtual reality, my mind always goes to you know like Red Dwarf, yeah. the episode where they go and become the gunmen of the, the apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is what I want. Dry and, and then he's like, keep, he keeps using the machine to have sex with all the the virtual <laughs> girls and like wears out the groin attachment. That's, that's why you want it. Yeah. No, that's well. That would be all right. Yeah. Um, but no, that's just what I think of, you know, yeah. like one of those like ridiculous headsets with the gloves and the costumes and that. It looks, it looks... The thing as well is you know that the second you buy an Oculus Rift, someone will make a mask so that it's got like Maggie Thatcher's face. <laughs> and then when you're putting it on, you'll be... Wilson, uh, the guy who works on the farm recently, um, on the day that she died, he, he named their new farmyard cat, Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it grows up to be a bust. <laughs> Natural among motherfucker. Um, but yeah, guess what? What? Both Chicken all... butt. Yeah. <laughs> guess what? Chicken butt. That's what I was going to say. Well, um, but uh, guess what? Chicken uh, butt. No. Ratchet and Clank and Heavenly Sword are both getting animated movies. Huzzah. Boom. I am quite excited about the Ratchet and Clank one. Ratchet and Clank, so it's another PlayStation exclusive, isn't it? Like, yeah. I haven't really played. Well, as far as the gameplay is, the gameplay is solid, but the characters are delightful. Yeah. Is the banter good? Yeah. Did you have you seen the trailer for it? Yeah. 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 
I mean, if the humour's that kind of with that charm and that quality animation, yeah. I think it's really yeah. it's like really self aware. They they kind of humour like they talk about the animators. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's it's been like that through the games. And I love Captain Quark or whatever his name is, the mm-hmm. the, the guy in the yeah. big superhero suit. He's fucking hilarious. Um, I got yeah, a strong uh, Incredibles vibe from him. Yeah, just mm. the visual style. Yeah, as well. yeah, that's quite good. I don't know who I don't know what is the animation house behind it. I don't know if it's an internal Sony one or if it's they've well, certainly in Traveller's Tales they had uh, internal animations making shorts and things like that. Well, yeah, it's, it's being so made it, by it a Rainmaker Entertainment, um, and they did a, uh, you know the game Escape from Planet Earth, or is that a film? Might be a film. Film. Might be a film I've not seen though, so no, I, I haven't wanna, seen it either. Make any but all, all the voice talents are returning, and I think it's just going to be one of those films that kids who have never played the games are going to really like, and then they'll uh, probably you, play the games. Have after. you played the games? I have, yeah. And uh, what do you think of the story of them? I like it. I like. I I really like all the the sort of story and the cutscenes and things. The gameplay itself is all right. Yeah. It's, it's it's pretty, solid. It's pretty typical platformer. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah. It's but except it's like. It's like pla- it's platformery, very arcadey feeling, and except you've got lots of guns, but they're like cartoony, silly kind of little guns. Awesome, the, the, yeah. The, the the robot dude. Yeah, it's it's cool. Like it's it's. Uh... It's the straight man though, isn't he? <laughs> Essentially, mm, he does a stupid laugh. It's better than that. <laughs> <laughs> what could be better than that? I know. Yeah, imagine. Um, but yeah, and th- but then the other one that they're doing is Heavenly Sword, and I'm not sure that that one will do as well. Uh, but that's like straight to DVD. Well, that's that's kind the curse. Of the curse of uh, Ninja Theory. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just going to bomb. Even if it's a million times better, it'll just pan. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you guys saw the uh, Final Fantasy Seven uh, Advent Children. Yeah. 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 I imagine it'll be something along the lines of that. Yeah. Yeah, that was okay. Mm, a bit nonsensical. Whereas Final Fantasy <laughs> is usually so down to earth, yeah, exactly, um, straightforward. It's just digestible, isn't it? That's yeah. the thing about it. Yeah. Well, that's I mean because they did Spirits Within, didn't they? First, yeah, which that's, was uh, pretty shite. Well, it, 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 it was, I suppose it was done, impressive for its time. What they should have done when they released it is just take that Final Fantasy title away and yeah. just call it Spirits Within, and it probably would have been brilliant. Yeah. But they call it a Final Fantasy. It's nothing like any Final Fantasy game ever. The the the, the, the life source or whatever they called it that was like the only tie to. The, What's that called? Make. Ma- it wasn't even called Mako. They didn't call it. Anything. That's a company, just, though, isn't it? Yeah, oh, no, it it's Mako. Macro Energy. Mm, Macro Energy. <laughs> Which I have to admit, I much prefer t- to the idea of mana, like yeah. the idea of being Mako being your actual magic power rather than mana, just because mana is just bread, isn't it? Something like that. That's that's what it means. Mind your mana. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, Lionhead Studios has selected John Needham as their new studio head. Right, so this is interesting because the guy is famous for being an MMO maker. Quite. A crafter of mummers. Mummers, mummers. And so I think everyone's favourite feature of for Fable 2 was the fact that you could have people like drop in and drop out. Yeah. So essentially that on a massive scale. Uh, it could be exactly what that studio needs to actually resurrect themselves a little bit from the floor that they sort what, of ditched on. A Fable MMO. It's kind of like I've I've certainly heard people ask for it before. Mm. I don't think there's ever been a particular well, clamour for it. Any RPG of this generation that's had at least one or two sequels, the thing people is, have started is, to ask for. I just but the thing is, it's an established console IP. Yeah, it's uh, one of the only I you know um, exclusive. exclusive Microsoft have got. But the thing is, I just don't see how they're going to pull it back from being such a fucking turkey. Than it, than it is. <laughs> make it make it more like the first game and less like the third. The first game was so good. I, I I don't understand what they did to go from the first game to the third game. Mm. I don't I don't know how know how you go that wrong. It's just a total turkey, a total turkey. So did Microsoft own Lionhead when they made the first game? I think they still do, don't they? Yeah. The, yeah, no, no, they still do. But in the first game, I think I they were an independent know. studio P- potentially who made the game as an exclusive, uh, and then yeah, Microsoft I seem to bought them. But then buying them out for Fable Two. Which is interesting. Mm. Mm. So I've got a quote here from uh, the new um, leader of Lionhead. So read that, Tom. In you, you might as well do Dutch. 
But you do it so much better than me. I can't do a Dutch accent. All I can say is... Struvenhalfen or whatever you said. Uh, I didn't say that. This is an <laughs> historic time in our industry, and I'm excited and honoured to be joining my <laughs> head in Microsoft Studios. <laughs> <laughs> is <laughs> focusing on building innovative game experiences and AAA experiences at Lion. Let's <laughs> get it off me. <laughs> I don't know. Personally, I can't wait to get started. <laughs> I, I can't wait to get started. I can't do that. I don't, I don't know anything Look about it. it. <laughs> but yeah, he's excited. Oh, God, I he's hope my grandma person. never hears this. She actually is Dutch. Oh, great. I know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, um, poor old, you know, like Team Bandai or Bondi or whatever the snake they're called? Yeah, Team Stick It to the Man. Oh, no, wait, no. Yeah. They're getting fucked. They're getting rogered. But anyway, after L.A. Noir, they, they got sort of disbanded or whatever. And then they, a lot of those guys went into this new studio, um, you know, Brendan McNamara and all that, all that lot. Yep. And they've been working on The Whore of the Orient which is, uh, I think it's a, a, a novel by the same bloke that did L.A. Noir. Um, but, like, it's all been shut down and... Well, I can't remember the last time I heard anything about that game. It was quite a while ago. Yeah, um, so I wonder how long it's just been simmering rather than roaring. Yeah, they were supposed to be doing, like, a, a Mad Max game as well or something, but, yeah, it's all gone a bit pear-shaped, so that's, that kind of sucks. Because I, I was looking forward to that, because L.A. Noir, I mean, it had a lot of problems, but I still enjoyed it. Like, it's... I thought they it was it was like they were going in the right direction. I was a bit they, let down by it. They didn't get there. They Do were like you, well, potentially. I mean, so it sounds like McNamara was a a bit of a problem in terms of his leadership style, but also like it just it seems to me like they have had a lot of trouble with just as an entire studio having the discipline to sort of choose features and work with them. I mean, it sounds from what I gathered from the actual finishing of. Uh, L.A. Noir, the rock star had to basically step in, take over production, and the management of the actual getting the resources done, do a lot of work themselves, mm. Mm. Yeah, um, it was fun, and man. really force the end, like force the actual finishing of the game through. Yeah, which is you know it's not a great sign, mm. and it damaged their relationship. So that's why Rockstar won't publish this. And yeah, it's, it's a shame though because I would have liked to see what they would have done next. Just because I I feel like. It had great ideas. Yeah, it had good ideas. But this is the trouble. You can generate good ideas, but you need to you need to have the staying power to be able to apply them and finish Mm -hmm. them. I'm sure they'll have them working to some sense. But you've got like actually getting a mechanic perfect Mm. and putting in the balance and the polishing time and getting everything, all the perfect art assets that complement it. Mm. It's it's grind. It's not fun work. It's it's hard. Coming up with the mechanics is really fun. Actually implementing them is hard, and it takes. A yeah. lot of discipline, but that's that's sad. I mean, I would have liked to see it, but uh, well, Capcom, good old Capcom. Uh, did you read about this? Uh, basically, they have revised their sales forecast for their okay. biggest games of the year, blaming excessive outsourcing for hindering the quality of their finished products. No fear. And no, no, no. But I find that incredibly insulting xenophobic again it's it's just so it just takes the piss like we were talking about DMC earlier that game is awesome Ninja Theory did a spiffing job they did and but they have they have become notorious recently for outsourcing everything Okay. Yeah, but, to... but Tomb Raider was brilliant. Uh, no, they, they didn't that's, do Tomb Raider. Didn't. Sorry, that's where it is. But but you know, you, you you give these games to people, and even if the game's really good, like like Devil May Cry, it's, mm. it's just such. A, it just seems like a, a slap a in the face. It is a bit of a scapegoat. It is them saying, "Oh well, we didn't really do it. It was this other, these other guys. So that's why it was shit." But I haven't really. I mean, uh, my, I, I can't. Beyond Devil May Cry, I guess they've put out some sort of fight game this year, right? They must have done. Well, what have Capcom uh, made Capcom, this year? Uh, Street Fighter X Tekken came out either right. this year or last year. Um, are you talking about published or in-house studios? Well, a bit, bit of both. I, I just honestly, I can't think. They don't do a lot. Nothing springs to mind. They don't, yeah. E- either way, they've revised their sales, basically. Um, they need to revise their fucking so, management. Yeah. They, they, Down uh, to QA. The Shura's Wrath. When was that? Was that even them? No, that was their that was their own studio. That was and that was a was that as well. Twelve. A Tiki. That had uh, a title. Oh yeah, because that had uh, Ryu and Akuma from Street Fighter in. 
as like a boss or something. <laughs> I don't know, you know what that game was. The, we gotta, uh, we got to get the fans in, so let's mash some of our IPs yeah. into this. The company now predicts that it'll shift 4.9 million copies of Resi 6, um, but when the game first launched, that number was 7 million. And for DMC, the number's gone down to 1.15 million, so I guess it hasn't even reached that yet, when it was originally supposed to be 2 million, which is such a shame. Such a mm. shame. It is a waste. Um, but yeah, and three reasons were given for the disappointing sales. A delayed response to expanding digital contents market... What? Right. That just no. Um, People ain't buying games from shops no more, mate. Insufficient coordination between the marketing and the game development divisions in overseas markets. Mm. So no one saw any adverts for Devil May Cry. So, which is what we were saying earlier. Yeah. And most interestingly, a decline in quality due to excessive outsourcing. Del- no. No. I, I, that is bollocks. It's it, it's 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 an excuse. To me, it sounds like it's it's, it's such a horrible so what, excuse. Can, they can, could have picked something else as well. Like, can, can anyone what what have been the most successful games in your minds that you can think of recently? Ever. No, no, no. Recently, like last six months, like Christmas period. Are you are you talking critical acclaim? Are you talking? So I, I would figures? I would say what, successful, Bioshock? like right Bioshock. I would say Journey. Journey, yeah, great, yeah, yeah. Um, XCOM probably as well mm. I've heard nothing but chatter about XCOM uh, yeah there is a lot of talk about it I, it wasn't something that I but it, it sounds like a game that wasn't necessarily high budget as well so it was probably quite a financial success yeah. as well yeah. but like they're, they're quite it's quite an interestingly broad spread of games I mean like you know there was obviously there was a Call of Duty and there was a FIFA, FIFA yeah. and they carry on as, as always but like uh, companies have survived a lot of people are really interested in Watch Dogs <laughs> Which is like I am. a brand new yeah, IP. I, am. I, I can't wait. It's got it's it's the thing that people are talking about a lot with regards to new consoles, mm. and that's how publishers have survived is by looking at what trends are, if possible, fitting an existing IP around because that's a safe market. If not, coming up with something new, doing something interesting. Well, I, the thing is, I think uh, I don't want to seem like I am taking Capcom's side here, but I kind of understand what they're trying to say but I think the way they've said it makes it sound as you say very insulting I mean you look at um, uh, Dead Rising the first one was internal yeah it was an internal studio for the second one they outsourced it uh, the production time was like twice as long and, and, and it, they didn't market it very well probably because it wasn't an in-house game yeah uh, there was that oh, what, what was it Jet Guy Dark Void? Is that what it's called? Oh, yeah. You have a jetpack. Yeah, yeah. That was entirely outsourced, and... Um, oh, that was, I that, was that. that was quite fun, though. Wasn't it Nolan North? Was the... Probably. You know, it's an it's a game. Thing, mate. Yeah. It's a male protagonist, so... You know, um, in but, Journey, the guy doesn't actually speak, but the guy who's not speaking in the game is Nolan North. Yeah, I heard okay. that as well. I've got mad if they paid him like however much just to come in and make Millions. it stupid. Every every little noise you make, we're gonna shower you in coins. <laughs> 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 but yeah, no, the, I mean, Capcom they used to do a lot of things in house, and over the last couple of years, they have become outsourcing more and more and more, and outsourcing maybe to not very well um, established or considered studios. They, well, yeah, you need to pick so, the people you work with carefully. But, yeah, but Resident Evil 6, was that in-house? I believe so. And uh, that was shit compared to Devil May Cry. That's what Capcom make, yeah. Devil May Cry, sorry, yeah. Um, Resident Evil. Resident Evil. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, that's been going down the pan for a long time. Yeah, but exactly. Devil May Cry, which was one of the ones they got right, was phenomenal. And, and it for Ninja... For, if I was at Ninja Theory and I just read that, I'd go, well, fuck you. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. This is it. So, How damaging is that to their relationship as a publisher to a pro- yeah, developer? Exactly, but that's what leads me to believe that, that it's, it's not so much as an excuse. I think it's a mis... I don't think... Miscommunication. Uh, yeah, I think it, in, in one way or another... It, mm. in, oh, fuck. Anyway, it just pissed me off. But uh, Good news, though. THQ's remaining assets, including Darksiders, Red Faction, um, oh, MX vs. ATV and more, have found new homes, so that's good. Oh, indeed. Um, snapped up by uh, some publishing little weird outsourcing publisher type thing, which is good news. Well, Nordic Games, Nordic pur- Games purchased there you go. Uh, Darksiders, Red Faction. And apparently they're already speaking to Crytek Texas, where all of the 
or a lot of the employees of Volition yeah. ended up. Yeah. They were already speaking with them about taking up the IP again and producing Dark Soldiers 3. Yeah. That would be really That's cool. Really, yeah, because, I mean... Four-player, multiplayer. I was going to say, it, it would be a shame um, if they didn't get to do all four... Uh, horsemen of the Apocalypse, wouldn't it? Just yeah, like cutting they... it short with two. Yeah. That sucks. I, I just can't wait to play Pestilence. <laughs> yeah. And famine. That's going to be really fun. Are you sure you're not feeling hungry? <laughs> I, know, I think I imagine famine. No, I, I ate before I came to the battle, thanks. <laughs> you're sure you're not hungry? You don't want to die of hunger yeah. anytime now. Hey, hey. Uh, <laughs> no, I imagine famine being a kind of like Raziel style character. I think that would suit, you know, Raziel? Soul Reaver? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I can see it. Mainly I can see the series going on in a four-player co-op fashion. That'd where you go Each. in as a team and, yes, war goes in as the fucking tank. Yeah. Death is the finisher. Famine is almost like the sort of damage over time sapper, so you just get him in the thick of it drawing damage off right, everyone. What's pestilence? He just, you know... Looks... Coughs a bit yeah. at the back. <laughs> 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 I'll be right with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Fleming here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've got a statement here from uh, old uh, Nordic Games CEO Lars oh, Wiggleflops. Swedish accent then. Yep. I can't do Hit that. Me. No, you do it. Okay. The hurdy gurdy hurdy hurdy birdy. Uh, oh shit. Swedish? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm not doing. I'm not you really can do sh- Danish if you want. Uh, I'll, I'll give Swedish a go. First and foremost. <laughs> Uh, that's more like German, it's isn't German, it? Yeah. How do Swedish people speak? Hurdy gurdy birdy hurdy. That's racist. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's as racist as Jim Henson ever was. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And uh, yeah, that's how the quote goes. <laughs> so uh, I, quote, I, I don't know Swedish. First and foremost, we are very happy about this deal, which also turns over a new leaf for the entire Nordic Games group. In the long term, we either want to cooperate with the original creators or best possible developers in order to work on sequels or additional content for these titles. A very important point to us is not to dash into several self-financed, multi-million dollar projects right away, but rather to continue our in-depth analysis of all titles and carefully selecting different financing models for developing new instalments or acquiring our piece. That's fair enough. Cool. Yeah. I think it's, I, I'm happy. I think that's cool. And like you, like you said, Nordic are looking at options, you know, with Crytek, USA, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, they've said, you know, we're not a developer. We're not going to create the sequel, so we're looking for the right team. Um, so are they, no. what, I, I, I've not heard of Nordic before. What, what do they do? They're, they're, they're a publisher. So they are a publisher. But they're, they're the traditional publishing model, is, and they don't have... They don't have any of their own fingers in development at all. They just license out IPs to people. Right, okay. Um, and then sort of, yeah, finance. What finance the development. Last, do you know? I'm, I don't know, but I'm excited for the possibility of Red Faction. Exciting yeah. PC news attached to this is, of course, that Gearbox are, uh, have Home bought the Homeworlds yeah. license, mm. which is a much-loved fan favourite. No, I did read that, yeah. And that, uh, that gets my, my loins... A quivering. Mm. <laughs> Meaty. Um, <laughs> Thanks. It makes your loins meaty. No! <laughs> I said a quivering. Oh. And then he said meaty. <laughs> <laughs> and that makes all the difference in the world. Sure. Speaking of uh, meaty, this, uh, this news is, might be uh, meaty for racing fans. Uh, acclaimed British developer Criterion, uh, best known for making Burnout, Need for Speed, mm-hmm. Hot Pursuit and all that. Uh, they, they're basically stopping racing, making racing games. They're moving... All they've ever done is make I racing know. games. But they're, they're no, moving no, no, away no. and they're doing something different. To be fair, that when the studio first founded, what their crowning achievement was was making such an amazing 3D model engine. Oh, yeah, I, like I know. On, um, on the PS1. And that, that was kind of their primary focus. And that when they built that, that was for everything. I think even now, if you were to go on Criterion's website, you'd probably find that a lot of it is... Um, Technical. Technical. A lot of it is, you know, talking about their 3D modelling. Like, I know they have a, a lot of um, 3D modellers in UK studios start off or do their internships at Criterion. So. so a lot of developers as well think about the Grand Theft Auto games. Grand. Grand. Grand, <laughs> Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft <laughs> Grand Theft Auto. Or Dominus. <laughs> um, so they think of those games as, uh, as driving games, chiefly. Because, you know, it, it sort of makes sense. They are, so that's, that's usually how you're getting around. Carry on. And, uh, 
fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, good, no, good, no, good, 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 yeah, good. It's um, most good. So it, it's sort of one of those things where I, I, I don't <laughs> think they'll leave their driving heritage behind. <laughs> Fuck's sake! <laughs> what? We're all making shit puns. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate myself. <laughs> hate <laughs> self. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's I, cool. I'm really I, I excited just, to see what they got. Yeah, I hope they exactly. don't make a modern military first-person shooter. It must be, it must be a bit shooter. shit to be tied down game. to making the yeah, same if they, game. Yeah, if they make a football game or a military modern first-person shooter. Or a military shooter slash football game. Mm. Ooh, Which you know, I've actually it. patented, so... OK. Brilliant. Cool. But yeah. um, a pa- apparently, uh, some other news. Uh, Batman Arkham Origins reportedly has a multiplayer mode. Already? Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so, what, what do you guys think about that? I think well, it's we, we spoke about this last podcast, didn't we? About the game. Orange we spoke Pizza. about the game, but we didn't, we didn't know there was a multiplayer. No, but we, we spoke, because it's not being made by... Rocksteady. No. Rocksteady. But just specifically, the fact that it's got multiplayer. We did speak last time in the podcast about Mass Effect and how if you've got a crowbar or multiplayer mode in your it game... It can be done. It can be done, and it can be done in a way that makes thematic sense. Having the Tomb Raider survivors fighting each other... In the multiplayer mode, makes no fucking sense. What, I, who, what happens in this then? Who, Basically, who, who, the multiplayer is you play as a member of Joker or Bane's gang, and you're trying to take down Batman and, and Robin. Um, wow, Robin's in it then. Yeah, well, thank he was goodness. In the, he was in the last one. <laughs> I quite enjoyed. Fucking love that in the last one. Uh, was it his tight him. trousers? Yeah, you play as him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, his trousers were well tight, mate. Nice. Nice and tight. Uh, Who did you sound like? I'm Mackenzie Crook, you sound like that. <laughs> Mackenzie Cook? Crook? He's in a Game of Thrones at the moment. Is he? I, do you know what? I haven't watched that. Fucking hell, dude. Really? I a lot that. of people tell me to, but then a lot, I, I hear everyone... I, there's like two... Everyone that's like, yeah, Game of Thrones, and then the other half, which is... If you want to watch porn, watch porn. If you want to watch Lord of the Rings, watch Lord of the Rings. And that's kind of the only two opinions. That is so complete and utter rubbish. I'm very much on the yay Game of Thrones and porn. Yeah. Watch of Game of Thrones and then watch porn. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, just watch porn. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so now you sound like them. No, no, no. And then Game of Thrones. But then, like, switch More back porn. to the porn when you get horny. <laughs> Okay, so Nintendo Direct, they had a, a new one recently, and there was lots... It was, you know, 3DS-focused, lots of stuff came out uh, a, a bit. 3DS is their successful console. Yeah. That's true. Um, it's funny that the Wii U's main competitor in the market is, like, their own handheld yeah. console, like, in mm-hmm. Japan and stuff. Um, but, yeah, that, so a bunch of stuff came out. I'll just bosh through. Oh. Um, new Mario Golf World Tour. Great. Awesome. Um, a lot of people love Mario Golf. Yeah. yeah, I had the first one on. Well, the first one I'm aware of on on Game Boy. Yeah, uh, Mario and Luigi Dream Team, which that is that looks, weird is that RPG, RPG one. That looked yeah. like a bunch the... of crap to me. I thought they looked. Like... I've heard a lot of people are super excited about that one. So I've, I've not I've not seen specifically this one, but the Mario and Luigi RPG games have been fantastic. The Paper Mario yeah. partners, Paper Mario. partners in time. No, no, no Mario, Mario and Luigi Partners in Time or something like that, or oh. Partners in Crime on the DS was incredibly yeah. good. I haven't I haven't played that. Really I, good. I well, think a lot of yeah. I think it looks it really interesting. Basically, it's like Luigi. You've seen yeah, like Luigi's like dreaming and then Mario kind of manipulates his dreams to get through the by levels and stuff him. by spooning him by, by doing the like pulling his moustache like, on the clip he's asleep on this pillow and he plays with his moustache and it like manipulates this dream world so you're looking down at Luigi's sleeping face on okay, the touch so, so there's two there's two things like half the there, time there's like the so touch you're, screen so you're thematically straddling Luigi so you can tug on his facial hair <laughs> Yeah, that's what the game is, basically. It's called Tucky Tucky Facial Hair Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> is it? No, it should be. <laughs> this is the year of Luigi, after all. Um, yeah. But yeah, Mario Party for the DS is uh, 3DS is coming out. Luigi sounds like a punishment you'd get given by a priest after confession. <laughs> <laughs> You've been sentenced to the <laughs> yeah. Three Hail Marys yeah, and a year people... of Luigi. 
<laughs> some people are born in the year of the rabbit. <laughs> some people are born in the year of the snake. Anyone born in 2013 is born in the year of Luigi. Nice. At least they have good moustaches. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Even as a From baby. Birth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. What was that, that? I think that was a French noise. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> all French people have moustaches. Yeah. They should. And, st- and stripy white and blue tops. And onions. Mm-hmm. What? And garlic. A string of onions. And bicycles. Yep. And berries. And an Eiffel Tower in their garden. And pretensions. And they all smoke. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so oh, they do like the saucisson. Oh, saucisson. <laughs> Excellent. Hello, France. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Uh, Yoshi's Island 3DS as no. well. Good. And it looks very adorable. Um, I love the Yoshi Island games. They are good. And they've uh, they've ported Donkey Kong Country Returns over mm. with like new levels and features and things. Cool. Um, which was, right was a cracking game on the Wii. Very very hard. I was expecting more co-op. Yeah, it but... was. It was it had co-op. The same co-op as it ever did. Yeah. yeah. Which is a shame because it sort of seems you've got those two characters on screen. Why not? You would have thought they'd them? bring more in. Mm. Uh, they've also got um, the new press, uh, Professor Layton's been um, brought over. Yeah. Uh, what do you call it? Regionalized. Localized. Lo- localized. localized. Yeah, localized. Yeah. So um, the most time I ever spent with a Professor Layton game was in a queue at Eurogamer, and this girl came up to me, one of the Nintendo reps, and I thought, boobs, excellent. Yeah. Would you like to play Professor Layton? Yeah, sure. And I think I held this thing for about... Which breast is called Professor and which breast <laughs> is called Layton? So I held this 3DS XL, in fact, they were demoing it. Oh, yeah. I was holding it for about five minutes and just watching this never-ending fucking cutscene intro. And it's not that I doubt that's bad. At home, with a game experience, that's probably quite good. But, like, chained a foot away from a girl who clearly, like, didn't want to be there at all and, like, stood in this awkward queue. I was just like, why Why have you made this your demo? Yeah, why, why it seemed like that? an awful game to demo. <laughs> awful. <clears throat> From uh, an animator point of view, the animation in it is really nice. Like, they've obviously oh, it's, got a huge animation team behind that. They've obviously and... got a huge man crush on Ghibli as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who doesn't? Well, exactly. I love a bit of Ghibli. Um, I haven't ever seen any of it. Yeah, well, you're crazy. You are. And I retarded. Just, you know, and crazy retarded. <laughs> <laughs> crazy retarded and crazy Speaking retarded. of crazy retarded, uh, another game that they were showing is called Bravely Default Flying Fairy. I skipped straight past that. I, I don't even... It's some wacky JRPG type thing. It looks weird. <laughs> to be honest, Nintendo consoles, like, after Final Fantasy sort of migrated away from them, I, I've never really considered them a great platform for the, the JRPG. They, they've still got loads of them, though. They've got masses, like a lot of strategy in the West? ones as well. Yeah, in the West, I'm not sure. They don't bring many over. No. Uh, and then there was a tiny bit of Wii U news. Oh. There are flying Pikmin in Pikmin 3, which has been put back to August. Mm. Brilliant. Just in time to but, save the console. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. Yeah, that'll do it. The thing is, it isn't even new news. They even told you on there. Yeah. If you actually go back and have a look... In the trailer. Yeah. We haven't made a um, new trailer. Think crap. Earthbound is coming to that, the this Wii is cool. U. This is cool. Uh, e-shop. E-shop, yeah, yeah, but it's an old game. If you care about no, Earthbound, no, you know. own it already. Old yeah. games is old, man. Old games is old, but it should have been on their age. If ago. I want to play it, I'll just download it. Mm. Legally. Probably. <laughs> so, yeah, that was all the news. And then there's the, the sort of Luigi DLC for the Super Mario Brothers U and all of that, which I'll, I'll get. It's, it's not bad. It's not. It's not really addressing the issue they have, though, no. which is that their mainstream TV console is flopping. It is. It is flopping, flopping around flaccid. like Reggie Phil's aims flaccid purple penis. Pink- <laughs> purple, purple pick buff. Purple Pikmin flopping around. Oh, fuck. You have missed a pretty important uh, game from that, though. Oh yeah, fuck me. I have. How did that happen? the only one that I was interested in really at all yeah so uh, they basically introduced a sequel to uh, this sort of old game that some of you might know um, with... Zelda Zelda it's a Zelda game <laughs> yeah. everyone it's a Zelda game Link to the Past 2 so linkier than ever <laughs> the interesting thing as much as Zelda games tend to just retread the same territory anyway an actual genuine sequel is not that common no. So, like, the actual 8-bit Zeldas 1 and 2 were sequels of each other, mm-hmm. and Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time are and in the same, same world, yeah. Minish Cap and... 
Spirit tra- tracks, trains. Yeah. No, no, like no. That. It's like spirit tracks and the phantom hourglass are both oh, in the yeah. same and then world. Miniature Captain something. But um, the uh, Ford links. Which are they, they're one? in the same world as Wind Waker as well. Yeah, yeah. So the, they, sword, the, so they've had plenty of things where, that share a world. I mean, the the on the Game Boy Color. They had the Age of Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons games, which sort of linked with each other, and you had like mm-hmm. doppelganger adventures and things like that, and that that was kind of cool. But they weren't really sequels no. of each other, so it's actually quite sort of nice to. Hopefully, it will be sort of directly I following onto a world. It's it's a really cool idea actually because it, it it means they can build up a link, fantasy based a link to on the past was the one because I, I did play the Nintendo's. original one. You know, on the original Nintendo, but and and I played two as well, which was a bit, but it was alright. And then, but Link to the Past is the one that I spent the most time with. Uh, you know, other than Ocarina of Time, obviously, but but around my childhood time, and I played that game. It was like, really so good much. Fun. It was it's amazing, yeah. amazing game. Um, and you know, it, I think from I'm not sure how similar. It, I mean, I've seen bits of video and things, but I hope it's not in the same actual map maybe because like I think one of the Zeldas did a thing where the very corner of the map was from an old game and then the rest of it was from the new game so it's like slightly but, further away and things but I just hope it's not too similar because it because yeah, jump in technology yeah now. Well, from what I've seen though like they have a lot of exactly the same enemies and things and they'll hmm. probably have some fairly similar game mechanics to to start with but I mean all the recent DS Zelda games specifically have Featured like the trains thing for for spirit tracks and the the miniature they were all like touch based though community. weren't they but yeah this, that's this it one. well this one they they've got the opportunity to do that well they've got the the drawing thing yeah yeah oh so yeah you can you 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 turn yourself into a drawing now and, and you go flat against a wall uh, and you can then move. that looks really interesting and I saw that and I thought okay this looks so really actually cool. if you have got some of the old map to explore and you can now slip be, between the cracks exactly mm. and things yeah. like that that's cool but not all of it like the, not the whole map the same map as before it would be, probably it have would, like it a would be nice if they put a, more attention you know more anyone, care than just anyone else remember the bit at the end of like Pokemon Silver or Gold or something when you realised that basically the whole of Pokemon Red was in there yeah and, and you're like, like just over the road the air. yeah and it was just like oh fucking brilliant you just fly <laughs> over to, to the yeah, other yeah. map yeah I never played it. You never played Pokemon. I played Pokemon Red and Blue, but uh, I didn't play much beyond that. I, I stopped on the next lot. Yeah. Fair enough. But, uh, yeah. Uh, and then there's that other thing where, because they've got the 3D technology, they've got the, the temples on, like, lots of levels. Mm, like, yeah. uh, vert- they're very vertical. And that looks really interesting as well. Um, I really, really should get a DS. I, I 3DS, rather. I really want one. Um, but I just I've got too much to play on the actual main console, so I just never I, get around yeah, to I it. I never really have an opportunity to play handheld consoles, and when I'm at home, I'd rather play a, on a, a big a, screen. Do you know, know what so. I really miss? I miss before I passed my driving license, and um, while I was living up in the north at university, the like seven or eight hour bus journey I would have. Yeah, back up to yeah. back up to my university flat after spending a weekend down here or something, and just burning through a DS's battery charge. Yeah, shit, well, mate. I can't even read a text on a moving vehicle without chundering like a. F- I'm not great <laughs> like with a it, faucet. especially the older I get. Not that I want to talk about getting older because you know it's depressing, but <laughs> 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 but you, no, you, once you you drive, you never have that opportunity to. Not until to Google do, Glass yeah. comes out. Well, yeah. but. Car journeys and and when you're a kid, yeah, that's what they. You've were always got that kind of. It's perfect to pass the time, and now usually if you're going to be passing the time, it's going to be ten, twenty minutes, and that's what your phone. You, you get go on your phone and you. That's kind of it. Most most of my time I spend on the Vita is actually at home on my yes, couch yeah. when I could be playing a, an yeah. HD console. It's nice that it can actually fill the fill the role of an HD console, admittedly on a smaller scale, but yeah. Maybe, maybe this will be the moment. Maybe they'll make a nice shiny Zelda-themed 3DS to go with it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do, I do want one because um, there are a lot of re- heard, brilliant games. On I don't know, Farm. Oh, I want one. Yes, yeah. I can see why 3DS is selling more than the Wii U. Yeah, well, would you do you reckon they'll ever make a Nintendo phone? Another no, Nintendo they, phone, they, I should they were, say. There were, yeah, there were rumours, but I doubt it. Yeah, I'd be interested. 
Yeah, I, I would be interested. I don't it, know if I'd buy one. <laughs> it, it's another one of those things where looking at the Vita and its touchscreen and its discs and all the games thinking that you sit there thinking speaker this end, microphone that end, just, just fucking put do it. it. On there. Like if you want to get the three G one, you actually have to get a SIM card in it anyway. So it's sort of just just fucking do it. But uh, in the wake of this this Nintendo Direct, which was all three DS based, uh, Reggie's basically said that you know coming up to E three. Um, from E3 onwards, the pace of Wii U releases is going to it's going to start you know speeding up, and then at this you know E3 we've got the the new Mario Kart, the new 3D Mario, the new Smash Brothers, all this stuff. So it's all going to start these sort of coming out. He says, yeah, they're but, actually going to try and sell some consoles. Now, yeah, weird. I don't know why they'd even you know what's, never mind. But yeah, I'm hopefully. And the thing is, is you can you can tease a Mario game as early as you want, even if it's like two years away from development release. You could actually just stick a CG out. But and be fine. I just think it's so <laughs> this you know wavering console that they've released, and they're putting all their hopes and dreams into an IP that's as old as home gaming itself. Nearly, you know, you know, oh. <laughs> to save the console, there's another Mario game and another Mario Kart game and another Zelda game, and you find they're, they're good IPs and successful IPs. But yeah, they're, 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 so they're the Call of Duty and FIFA of, of the Nintendo, Nintendo console. World, yeah. yeah, sorry, man. That's, that's Except a is. bit more gritty. But there's so much talent within these in house studios, make some new IPs. You've already Nintendo loyals are, are loyal to Nintendo. They're going yeah, to buy. Yeah, I mean, these basically, games. the rule of a Nintendo IP is just take some really random characters, put them in a really random place, like a plumber that jumps on turtles and and down pipes. And yeah, he's Italian. He eats uh, what spaghetti and wears dungarees. Boom. I'm looking forward to Mario 2014. Like a plumber is born. Gritty, realistic, survival. Dark Knight style. Yeah. <laughs> Reboot the series. I can't if they did With that. Hans Zimmer doing the score like... One man. Bow. <laughs> and his, and brother. his brother Luigi. <laughs> Who is marginally retarded. <laughs> Welcome to the gaming chart. Uh, guess what? FIFA. No. Call of Duty. No. C- d- d- Bioshock. No. What? No Bioshock number one. No. Number one is. I mean, if there's any justice in the world, I would be your man and you would be my girl. Yeah. Um. But there's not. No. So can it? So it's injustice. God's among us. Is really? at oh, number one. That's number one. Numero uno. All I know is, ever since what's his face back in the adven- new adventures of Lois L- or Clark Kent and Lois Lane yeah. back in the nineties, since then every new actor that's played Superman, I've wanted to punch in the face. Yeah. So perhaps it's that. He's, uh, she was Terry Hatcher. Who the fuck was he? What was this? What are you talking about? The, the guy that played Superman, Superman in the Adventures of Superman. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Lois Lane. And then what it's, the, it's, it's the new Adventures yeah. of Superman. And Lois Lane, yeah. Yeah, I saw that. On other Superman-related news, the Man of Steel trailer looks pretty cool. Yeah, it does look quite mm. cool. Is that that's the first trailer that's actually uh, that I've been marginally excited about? All the others were boring as balls. Yeah. Because who who played him in the last film? The last time they rebooted the franchise. I didn't watch it. I didn't. I don't know. Because it was just like... <laughs> Kevin Spacey, wasn't it? Was it? it was, uh, whoever it <laughs> was. They, Superman. He'd had his personality <laughs> surgically removed. So, oh, would, uh, Steven Seagal would make an amazing <laughs> Superman. <laughs> so yeah, Bioshock Infinite is at number two. Number three is Fire Emblem Awakening. Mm. All right. Number four... Oh, yeah, who knew? Who knew? Um, number FIFA. F- nope. Oh. Is Tomb Raider... Uh, Defiance has dropped down to number five, and I've actually watched the pilot of Defiance now, and it was quite fun. Yeah, yeah, like it was like it looks like they've spent a shit ton of money on it. I hear the game is a little bit bugged. Yeah, yeah I think I've it's quite heard boring. No one really talks. I don't know. I just heard that it's a bit shit. Like it's been given like sixes across the board, pretty much. And for an MMO, with the, with the the amount that are out yeah. there, you're not going to play a six out of ten MMO. Are yeah. you? Not with the likes. Or just even a six out of ten game. Really. Well, I don't know. Like what? 
I think Mercenaries 2 was a 6 out of 10 game. Yeah, but you like Mercenaries and I don't. No. I don't really like cheap action films either, (laughs) so I wouldn't like cheap action games. You don't like cheap action films? What what about, like, the classic action films of, like, the 80s and stuff that were cheap and shit? That that was when they were good. No, (laughs) they were shit. Like, okay, if someone said to you, do you want to watch, you can either watch Die Hard... 4.0. Or, no, 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 Die Hard the first, or G.I. Joe... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which one would you choose? Obviously, G.I. Joe. Obviously, G.I. Joe. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no one would choose that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. No, yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, then it's FIFA 13 at number six. Right. Uh, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops is at number seven. Right. Luigi's Mansion 2 at number eight. Uh, very good, I've heard. Um, is that what it's coming at? Was it... Was it, it was on the charts last week. Oh, I think it was. I think it was a lot. I think it was a bit higher. Um, and then Tiger Woods PGA Tour 14 <laughs> is at number nine. Tiger Woods is back on the box, is he? Disgrace doesn't last long in this game, does it? I don't know how many other golfers are there. Mm, that's true. Um, None that I care about. No, I don't. He's Scottish, right, isn't he? Yeah. Scottish. Yeah, Tiger Woods. <laughs> hey, <laughs> <laughs> joking. It's a joke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Can you can you have like a little sign you hold up when it's a joke? Just so we know. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I just I but I did pound it apparently. Um, <laughs> and then Far Cry Three is at number ten. Good. I need to pick up Far Cry Three. Yes, you do. Yes. You most yes, definitely do. do. Since last podcast, I've actually I, I watched the uh, Blood Dragon trailer. Yeah. And because when you were talking about it, I thought it sounded cool. But if I had seen it before talking about it last week I would have been going crazy because I watched the trailer and I honestly cannot wait I mm-hmm. I just watched the entire trailer with a ridiculous smirk on my face I can't wait I know I, just any game that includes a middle finger button yeah it's just it's brilliant. incredible it just I don't know it's, it's how you can tell all the best co-op surgery simulators are going to be good mm. is when they open with the guy middle fingering the patient before like picking up the hacksaw you know <laughs> it just seems to me like some of the best games come from like these like spontaneous ideas like 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 we were saying last week it, it seems to me like some guy one of the programmers I think this is the case it's been yeah. it's been established that it, they were just mucking about with it yeah. and I think it's one of those things as well where you know like modders are they usually the ones that do all that crazy shit? They're like out modding the modders in this case. Like I know, yeah. but these are, these are where all these amazing like, ideas come from. When did, people did, got these... did they just get told, "Look, guys, you know, I think you they got, just turned you got up. four months." I think they just Have turned fun. up and went. A, like, a couple of them went. Yeah, we stayed behind and made this. What do you reckon? And they went. Do you know what? Let's just do it. We've got is the that, money. Let's just put. Is it that out. tiger shooting lasers out of his eyes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes, it is, and we're not ashamed of it. Publish it. <laughs> yeah. But, like, all the cutscenes... Uh... Yeah, could you imagine with, like, a big stamp, just like... Yeah. I'll publish. <laughs> <laughs> Probably spat all over my tea there. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's what I do. As long as I don't catch ginger. <laughs> <laughs> God, imagine that. Oh, my God. Wait, yeah, wake up one morning, just like... <laughs> Why? Why? Suicide rates the ginger spike. hairs on the pillow. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> you ever died? Well, no, I just don't think it would work. G- G- ginger James died it once. Um, Black? I think it was purple. Even brighter. Oh ginger. yeah, no, and green once, didn't it? Oh, purple or green? I, I it, know that he did. Yeah. It just, it just wouldn't work for me. I think it, the, 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 the sort of ripping that I would get for it just would not be worth doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so so moving on to the new releases, um, Injust- Injustice Gods Among Us uh, came out on the 19th, um, which seems to have done pretty well. It's got like an 82 meta score. Really? Um, it looks like they've made some effort to put like a storyline in it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and I think, you know, if you're into beat-em-ups and you like comics, this is obviously your game. Um, but it's, it does nothing for me no. whatsoever. I can't it, believe it's got such a high mental score, to be honest. Yeah. Well. It's probably not a bad game, to be fair to you. Yeah. I think it's just, it's in a genre that none of us I think the, the Mortal Kombat reboot, uh, it's, it's obviously by Nether the Realm. same people, yeah. and like that, that was supposed to have quite good, f- like, but it, if sort of slightly simplistic fighting or something, so it's, it's at similar. Least, at least. I mean, so the comparisons always get made between Marvel and DC. Yeah. And now they've both got beat em up games sort of dedicated to it. But. At least both of them have the decency to have really shit water-based heroes. I mean, that does... Aquaman? Yeah, Aquaman was pretty poor. And then it's the, what, the 
Oh no, he is the king of Atlantis, isn't he? Is the DC one? That DC is, is Aquaman. Yeah, that's DC. Yeah. And then Marvel is just what is his name like? Fish boy or something. Wet Water Lake. kid. I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> Soggy <wet>. man. <laughs> Soggy man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, shit knows. But like, yeah. So, um, and then um, tomorrow, uh, Thomas uh, was alone. Comes out on the old PSN uh, for PS3 and for Vita. And so far, there aren't very many reviews up on Metacritic. But the ones I've seen have been fairly positive. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I won't bother saying the, the meta score. But like, it looks like it's going to be really cool. Um, it's got lots of eights and nines. Um, and then. Uh, in a couple of days after that, um, Dead Island Riptide and Star Trek The Game come out. Dead Island Riptide, the we're sorry that this tit's attached to a grotesquely mutilated corso, cor, torso, corvo, corvo tops, yeah. is coming out and uh, we'll uh, do our best to make sure it never happens again. Oh, but we are releasing this shit. Yeah, this one's still coming out. Yeah, it's still coming out. And, uh, yeah, we want you to buy it and put it on your shelf or give it to your grandma as an an ornament. Um, Sounds good. It does. But, yeah, that that has not got a good meta score, Dead Island. It's it's got a 58. From what I've understood of it, they've taken out all the bugs from the original Dead Island, but they've also taken out all the fun. Really? From slapping Um, zombies with wood. I never appealed to me, to be honest. I had but so much fun with the first one. Did you? I just think that the, it was wacky. Everything, yeah. Everything is so oversaturated with zombies at the moment that I just see zombie on something and I think, ugh. Yeah, but it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't on the first one. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. He's a joker. I am a comedy man. Comedy man. <laughs> I think we're all a bit tired. <laughs> I keep seeing things. Yeah? What, like yeah. ginger people? Oh, gross. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Whenever I close my eyes, they haunt me. <laughs> I've ginger bashed you a lot today. I'm sorry, Rob. That's okay. I'm used to it. I'll just <laughs> oh, go upstairs and cry <laughs> after this. <laughs> uh, but the this, this Star Trek The Game uh, has not got a meta score yet. But And I really want it to be good, but it's going to be a tear, isn't it? It's bringing back the Gorn. Yeah. Possibly my favourite Star Trek enemy. Yeah. The guy who was clearly in a suit that many couldn't see, so takes the slowest punches at you. Uh, what's his face? Yeah, Shatner. see, I, I, I'm a big fan of the original uh, series of Star Trek, and I just, I'd love to have a really good Star Trek game. And, like, cause I, I quite enjoyed the reboot of Abrams. But well, I, I plotted a game that was a plotted, designed. Right. A game that was a survival horror game wherein... That's a really suffocy thing to say. I plotted a game. Plotted a game. We plotted that land. I farmed them turnips. <laughs> and them game turnips. And so the idea was a survival horror game and you're a red coat or red shirt sent on away missions with Kirk and the other named cast and you don't even have a name. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And it's sort of a, a matter of... I'm surprised they haven't done that, to be honest with you. Yeah, and you've just got to survive... As long as you can, before, oh, right. and you, and you have to in die in some sort of humiliating fashion. What, and you have like a, a so it's almost sp- like a roguelike, and it's more about like how through the mission you can get before That's your inevitable. Simple, device. but that'd be pretty. I like it. Pretty I like good. it. And then uh, finally, uh, uh, Blood Dragon is coming out on the first of May. That soon? I thought it was at the end of summer. Well soon, mate. I can't wait. Yeah, we've got the whole summer drought to go. Oh, yeah. I cannot wait. There isn't really a summer drought this year. I mean, there's, there's less, but there's still quite a lot we of games coming GTA out. GTA in the middle of summer. No, that's yeah, September, September, but you've got The Last of Us. Um, can't wait for that either. Which is in June. There's quite a few games coming out in well, June. Well, I suppose if people are expecting new platforms at the end of the year, then you don't want to be releasing your PS3 game just as the PS4 comes out. Yeah, mm. and well, um, you've oh, got nice. um, in that Insomniac shooter, the one that they EA'd up all over the place. Oh, right, yes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's there's another big one coming out in the summer, but I can't shoot. Mm, no, a big one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, cool. Yeah, so, I mean, I've got a little bit of feedback, or should we just... No, go on, no. This is, this is the interesting part. Okay. Like, how many are there? Uh, three. Cool. Well, I, there were more, but I've, I haven't... Trimmed. Yeah, I've trimmed. Your critics weren't good enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Try harder, user base. Um, so I've got a question from Patrick Ferrellin. Right. Marry Luigi. No, no. <laughs> it's, uh, the question is very simple. Boxers or briefs? Oh. Boxers. Uh, boxers. 
Actually, right now I'm wearing boxer briefs. As, as am I, mm. as am I. So I, I would high five you with my <laughs> underpants, but this is probably inappropriate. <laughs> low five. Low five, yeah. Um, yeah, I like a pair of uh, pants I can go swimming in if need be. Yeah. But that's not like my primary reason for choosing. <laughs> no, it's just a nice, nice. It's just um, a nice middle ground. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, Good. Mine are black, by the way. I don't know what mine are. I've got a really nice pair of Sonic boxers that my yeah, sister I have a pair bought me for boxes. Christmas one year. And they are the ones that I wear when I have no other pants <laughs> left. Your sister pants. <laughs> yeah, my sister pants. Brilliant. <laughs> um, yeah, I always feel super sexy when I'm wearing those. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Remarkably good question. Good work, you yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Siphon Point O says, um, do you think it's fair for people to hate on Microsoft for rumours that are essentially rumours, there's no confirmation on anything, um, you know, or, 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 or do you think it's their fault for not saying anything, you know? So I think we've kind of really gone over this. We have. It's it. People shouldn't make any assumptions, yeah, really. But, no, but just but because... But Microsoft could do more to... See, I, I don't think it's fair for people to hate on them for it. No, but but they do. Own, <laughs> yeah, and they do deserve for, it for not for not stepping up and saying something. You know, it, well, if, if, if 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 everyone was fair, people wouldn't you know get angry at them about complete you know rumours and things that aren't not true. issues. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, these rumours are going to exist, and people are going to build up resentment towards them, and there is no reason why they can't just step in and say. But because they haven't officially announced it, if they had already officially announced it, then they, then I'm sure they would. But because because it's ha- because it's the game industry's best kept secret. Yeah, well, mm. that's but, what I mean. No, uh, but just yeah, who who's is, is there someone at Microsoft convinced that like they'll never see this coming? This new Xbox. No, I don't think so. I obviously <laughs> not, but. I like, reckon there is just one guy. Just one guy at the top gang. <laughs> we are fucking what a tight there, boys. What a tight. <laughs> I can't wait to see how they try and like when they unveil it and they they try and look really excited like huh yeah. huh. Mm. Oh, I bet you weren't expecting that. <laughs> what? Everyone's just like finally, <laughs> <laughs> you pricks. Everyone will just someone will have a big banner in the crowd that will be like one of the press league. Shots of it or something. <laughs> <laughs> just be waving that. That would be amazing. amazing. <laughs> Could you imagine if it like came up and like the whole sea of journalists just heckled the shit out of them? It's about Seen to... it. Yeah. <laughs> Heard it. <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there'll just be some guy at the back who's just reading out the guy's press announcement three like three minutes ahead of the guy yeah. or something. <laughs> just like reading the auto cue just slightly yeah. further ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 excited about this. Uh, yeah, d- don't don't assume anything. This thing could it could come out. It could be a yeah. phone. I mean, as much as I like to take the piss, I am genuinely excited to see what they ha- have I, to I, say. I, yeah, I think we just. As, as we've said, there's a lot of negative attitude towards the rumours going around, but that's what they are. They're just rumours. I don't know if it's... At the moment, I, it's not excitement. It's relief that they're finally going to fucking yeah. do something about it. But yeah. I'm sure when it gets closer to the time, I will get excited. Yeah, and like when, when, they, when we actually have this event, we'll know whether this resentment is going to like stick around for true. I think... For I know, proper. I know we say it all the time. Really I know, I'm awful. <laughs> but I think we should all do it in one room. Huh? I think we should all watch the <laughs> event. If it's streamed live like the PSN, uh, the PlayStation 1, I think we should all watch it together. I yeah. think that would be, you know... We'll have to check all the timings out for it. But, yeah. Yeah, because if be it's thing. America, it's probably going to be Tenet or whatever it was again. Or it might be, like, middle of the day or something. Mm. Yeah, we'll sort something out. Yeah. Uh, and the last question is from Mr Falcon X 32 oh, uh, I he love says, that guy. I, I do too. Um, he says, uh, Great show, I'm enjoying it. My question relates to Arkham Origins... I was wondering which game or character would do well with an origin story. From the Batman universe? No, just any character from any game like that you'd like to see their origin story. Or, or just any IP that you'd like to see an origin story of. Uh, that's a good question. It's a really good question. Part of me, part of me, as it's the year of Luigi, would like to say Luigi. I want to see... A Luigi origin story? Yeah, yeah. I want to see what turns him into the man in green. <laughs> <laughs> Could you like imagine like 
what their parents were like. Like, they were, like, sort of doting on Mario, and then Luigi was getting, like, his hand-me-down clothes, even though he was, like, a foot taller. <laughs> These have turned green. <laughs> <laughs> I can, see, he... I can see a really slow motion like moment as he pulls his hat on in front of the mirror and is like, yeah. Mmm. <laughs> Do you think he's just green because he's just so jealous of his brother? Maybe. <laughs> he's so shit. Uh, this is going to take some Diz- real Dizzy the egg? thinking. You what? Dizzy the egg? I don't even know what that is. Yeah. Oh, I, I know what it is. Yep, sorry. It just, you could have an interesting one because you could be like, there's, just, there's a chicken. Or is there... Or is it an egg? <laughs> or was there a chicken first? Whoa. Yeah. Mind Thinking blown. Meta. Uh, brain scrambled. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> Ant's just looking yeah. so confused. I just, there's so many things. I don't know, what about you? See, I quite enjoyed like uh, Nathan Drake in the third Uncharted game, like being young. I, w- I wouldn't mind seeing some more of his youthful exploits like Indiana Jones you know like in Indiana Jones the one where he's on top of that train yeah yeah Last Crusade belongs in a museum you know they did like a whole series of the young Indiana yeah, Jones yeah I remember with, with, vaguely. with Phoenix I vaguely recall did they but, really yeah, yeah yeah like they had quite a few he joins like the Mexican Revolution and things like that it's, is it as good weird. as the Star Wars Christmas special oh, that's pretty good did you see the uh, Star Wars Sesame Street Christmas special oh fuck it no it's incredible <laughs> It's just when you've got when you've got a whole bunch of Muppets standing around the actor who's Chewbacca and he's all going and then one of them's going me, 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 me. <laughs> I'm like, this is getting fucking weird. Did you see when Harrison Ford was on Jimmy Kimmel recently? Yes. That was so funny. You bastard. She was my wife. <laughs> see you in hell. Yeah. So uh, that's this week's show. Hey. Um, it's been it's been a chilled one. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's been the the green tea, I think. Is, uh, yeah, that's probably it. Yeah. Probably right down. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh... Did you have another green tea? No. You just went back it didn't to really it. didn't really tickle my pickle. It's a bit bitter, isn't it? Sometimes. Or a bit burnt sometimes. Yeah. A bit, bit of burn. Uh, it was okay. It was it was fine. Like I said, I love the burn. Try I'm the, more uh, traditional. All right. <laughs> Do you know in Japan all the vending machines have like ice green tea? Like you can go and just get cold green tea. Is it true that they have ladies' panties as well in vending machines? <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty sure it is. That sounds real. <laughs> <laughs> they have Confirmed. sex robot vending machines as well. Awesome. They don't. Oh. But it won't be long before they do. Oh yeah. I've got, got a, got a, upstairs. <laughs> got to build that crowbar separation between uh, sex robot and killer robot. Yes. Do it. I'm just going to play us out with the Bucky O'Hare theme. All right. I need to do the emails first. <laughs> Another time of space. Doesn't it remind anyone else of like a Def Leppard song? Well, I don't know, but I've based so much of my character design on this show. <laughs> it needs to happen. It needs to happen. It sure does. So um, if you want to write into the show and ask us a question or leave a comment or suggestion, um, then email us at videogamespodcast at vxm.me. Uh, visit our Facebook page. Uh, with Oh, we got a lovely new banner this week, we courtesy did. of um, one Rob Gisby, uh, <laughs> <laughs> who does some amazing Famous for your artistic artwork. talent. Yeah, no, that's true. Uh, no, and, and, and did it. It's... Uh, Mm-hmm. It's got very. Uh, it's got cartoon versions of our beautiful faces. I'm uh, now the only person to contribute something artistic to the podcast. Basically, you're the w- uh, sorry. You're the I'm only the one. Only not person to. not to contribute something artistic. You've got your little music. And well, the, you uh, always do our post-show lap dances. So, mm-hmm. and that's that's, true. that's quite artistic. Getting learning to do the booty clap was the hardest part. <laughs> booty clap. That's what it's called. <laughs> that is a band name, right there. <laughs> Someone call your band Booty Clap Can't we even and send some hum- songs. Yeah, in. Start a humorous. <laughs> what a big round of applause for the booty clap. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, that is a brilliant name for a band. Um, or a disease. Isn't it just? Or a disease, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've got the booty clap. Oh, no. Oh, awful. Dribbling. <laughs> um, so, uh, tweet at us, <laughs> at Rob Gisby, <laughs> at TQ Design, at and Polaroids, or we'll give you the booty clap. <laughs> Indeed. I'm going to do 
you mind first? Yeah, go ahead. It's really go ahead. quick and shit. <laughs> yeah. That, so where? That's your uh, that's your style. Quick and shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my ethos. <laughs> Ladies. 